Dragon System. Chapter 82 Transfer. Gary opened up the envelope and pulled out the letter inside. As Gary started reading the letter, he didn't move a muscle. He stood still like a statue. While his eyes were glued to each and every word he read. It had been a good 10 minutes and Gary still hadn't moved. It was as if he was reading the letter over and over again. The whole room felt like they needed to be silent because of the atmosphere that was coming from Gary. Until Dan couldn't take it anymore. Hey man, are you okay? As soon as Dan spoke those words Gary dropped the letter and ran out of the room. The letter floated through the air until it touched the floor landing right next to Dan. It's probably just his girlfriend breaking up with him or something. Everyone gulped. They knew the letter was serious and wanted to find out what had made Gary react like that but at the same time. They wanted to clearly respect Gary. All but one person that is. Dan went to the floor and picked the letter of the ground. No. Monk shouted. Do you remember what happened last time? What happened last time? I asked. Everyone started to avoid eye contact with me. I had no clue what they were talking about or why they were acting like this. Dan wafted his hand in the air ignoring Monk's warning and started to read the letter. Then even Dan was frozen stiff. Dan was a big talker almost as much as Kyle so to see him speechless. It must have been something important. Well then, what is it? Martha asked. Dan then folded up the letter and placed it on the table. I don't think this is for us to see. Someone should go out and check if Gary is okay. This was a strange sight to see. Dan was never compassionate towards others. So whatever the contents of the letter were, it had to be serious. We all split up and looked for possible places we might find Gary. After looking around common hangout places at the academy I decided to go to the roof. When I opened the door, I could see a blonde boy's back looking over the edge. I walked over slowly to Gary thinking about what to say. I was hoping I wasn't the first one to find him. If Gary needed comfort then I defiantly wasn't the best person for that. Slivia. Martha heck even Dan might have been better. As I got closer to Gary he could hear the sounds of footsteps approaching him. As he turned around, I could see his red bloodshot eyes. They were slightly swollen and puffy. It was as if he had been crying. I came over and patted Gary on the back and started to look at the city view with him. If Gary wanted to talk to someone, I would let him say it first. There was no need for me to say anything. We both stood side by side looking at the view until Gary eventually said, you want to know about the letter. Don't you? I didn't reply but we were the only two on the roof so of course. He knew I could hear him. Well you deserve to know about this as well. The letter it was about Amy, she's dead. Suddenly images of my first meeting with Amy started flashing in my head. The stupid things we talked about. How she used to watch me train for hours on end. I don't know what the feeling was but my heart sank down a little. But that's not all. Gary made a fist so hard that his fingers were digging into his own skin. Blood started to spill from his hand. They say she died inside Roland Academy. It was a duel with some sort of Nobel. And what do they do? They offer my family money like it will make all their problems go away. Gary shouted. I bet he wasn't even punished. After all, he only killed a common girl from a poor small village. I swear I will kill the person who did this to my sister. Anyone else would have probably tried to calm Gary down but not me. I knew exactly what Gary was feeling. This hatred he had for this person he hadn't even met. Was the same hatred I bared. The sinking feeling in my heart too also changed to anger. Ray. You have to help me. Gary put both his hands on my shoulders. I don't think he realized his hand was bleeding for it was soaking into my school uniform. You're actually a mage, right? You can summon a beast and even use fire powers I saw it. Demonstrate your powers in front of the Master Knights and get a transfer to Roland Academy. You want to find this person too right? Although I did want to go to Roland Academy. It was rumored that was where the divine being was and I wouldn't mind helping Gary on the way but there was still much I had to do here. What was behind the red door? What was in the Dragon Knight's tomb and were the Dragon Knights similar beings to me? Only then would I be happy with moving on to Roland Academy. I then thought if I told Gary the truth maybe he would be able to understand. He had been good to me this whole time and without him. I probably would have died the other day. If it was him, he could keep a secret for me. I can't do that Gary, my powers they're not normal. Before I could finish Gary turned away from me. I understand. You don't need to say anything else. 
Then a thought came to my mind. The tournament. At the All Kingdom tournament there will be people from all different kingdoms and academies. Roland will be there as well. Maybe we can find some information there. Gary started to walk off and turned around and smiled at me. Thank you, Ray. My dragon system. Chapter 83 Upgrading. Gary started to distance himself away from the group. We hardly ever saw him outside of training and when he came back to his room he would always be covered in sweet. Sometimes I would spot him at the training ground practicing. The others had bugged Dan many times about the contents of the letter. Eventually. He gave in and told the rest. Everyone knew Gary was going through a tough time so they gave him space to rest. In truth everyone was pretty busy. The Avrian Academy tournament was only one month away. There were many prizes up for grabs but only the top five people could go on to take part in the All Kingdom tournament. I wasn't too bothered about the tournament before. My original plan was to make it into the to the top 10 to keep the old man happy. But there were many things that had happened. I had now promised to help Gary. It was most likely Gary was training to be in the top 5. At our next Black Knight training session, Sir K had given the four of us a nice surprise. He had brought the equipment form the pureblood members. All the weapons and armor laid out whereof the intermediate class. It's not everything that was there. Because a lot of it was ruined beyond repair. Where's the sword that Lancy was using? I asked. Although the sword itself is not ruined. It's practically just a basic weapon now. For some reason. The magical properties of the beast crystal inside have gone. Gary and Ray. You get first pick. I went over and picked up a shoulder guard piece. There was nothing else there that really interested me. Sir K had already paid for my items to be repaired. So my gauntlets and chest piece were back in top shape. I originally wanted a better sword but Gary had already picked the dual blades and they were a set after all. Gary had taken the dual blades. Which were purple in color with a slight curve to them both. Monk decided on taking a chest piece and some boots. Kyle was attracted to the chain weight for some reason. I suggest you get your armor dyed. The tournament is coming out and it's a chance for you to show off your powers. You want to stand out. If you no longer wish to be a knight when you finish studying. Then it will be a good opportunity for you to get scouted from Nobel families and act as a guard. Because of the crystal beast armor coming from all sorts of different beasts. There were many times where our equipment would mismatch. A lot of knights and armies chose to dye their equipment to represent their colors. Some students just did it as a fashion statement. Although I didn't care much. I did like the color red. So. I decided to get my equipment dyed red. Our hunting session had been cancelled for the week due to the incidents that happened last time. Many people asked what had happened to Lancy. There was a rumor going around that he died bravely in a mission. Of course. Only we knew the truth of the whole matter. Sir K was right. It seemed like no one knew of the faction called Pureblood. In the evening I would travel to the foothills with Noir. When I put her back into the system the flames seemed to stop affecting her. She healed just as quick as my body which was a relief. Without the help of her and Gary at that time I would have died. I needed to get stronger. So I didn't have to rely on the help of others. The easiest way to do that right now was to gather more crystals. The problem with the upcoming tournament was I wouldn't be allowed to use my abilities. The second I did the academy would know of my hidden powers. If I wanted to win this tournament I would have to do it using my pure strength. When hunting around the foothills I came across an area where there were ice golems. This was a gold mine for me as ice golems were weak to fire. They also carried an elemental attribute of ice. After defeating seven of them I managed to absorb six points in my ice attribute. And gathered three crystals via the system and four carving out. I would come back and return to the foothills often looking for new beasts. I found that many beasts in the area carried the attribute of ice. It was important for me to find new type of beasts as the system would stop giving me crystals after defeating the same beast again and again. Every day I would train with the old man to hone my hand to hand combat skills. Train with the black sash knights to work on footwork and sword skills and then hunt in the evening to gather crystals and improve my body and elemental powers. After hunting every day for the last three weeks I had become stronger. Stats. Race. Dragon Knight. Mana Pool. 10. Fire Element 16. Ice Element 12. Basic Tier Points 100. Intermediate Tier Points 43. Skills. 31,000. Dragon Eyes Mana Drain Mana Eater. Pet. 
Noir. Race. Horned Wold. 100 basic tier points. 58 intermediate tier points. I also currently held 10 intermediate beast crystal items. None of these was of use to me as they were weapons or items that I wouldn't need or use. I kept them for now in case in the future I found an advanced tier crystal and needed money to craft it into an item. I wasn't the only one who had gotten stronger during this time. During the last three weeks, the team had defeated many intermediate creatures and had gathered strong equipment. Ian had better axes, Martha a better bow and arrows, Monk with his daggers and so on. IT was going to be a tough competition. There were even the third year students I needed to worry about like Harry and Jasmine. It was a shame I hadn't figured out the condition to unlock more skills. There were some useful ones that I would have liked to use. But there was no time left. Finally, after the long wait, it was time for the Avrian Academy Tournament. My Dragon System. Chapter 84 Passing Together. I woke up at 6 AM this morning. Instead of putting on the standard uniform like every other day. Today was different. Usually. When inside the academy. The students were only allowed to wear the school uniform with training equipment. The training equipment weapons were mostly made out of wood. This way we wouldn't seriously injure ourselves when sparing. The only time we were allowed to use our beast gear was on missions or when hunting. I had successfully dyed all my current equipment red with black outline. My fang bore chest piece. My newly acquired shoulder guard and my boots which were only regular. Nothing special. My gauntlets were already red so there was no need to dye them. Today everyone taking part in the tournament was to wear the best gear they owned and this included using real weapons this time. The tournament was taking place at the sports arena in the city. It was around a 20 minute walk from the academy. Although the city was filled with mostly knights. It didn't stop everyone from participating in regular activities. The city had an arena where they would often host sporting events or team games. This was where all the students were to gather today. In the dorms everyone seemed nervous. Some putting on their gear backwards. Some just sat there deep in thought. This event seemed like a big deal to them but to me. It didn't really matter that much. While the rest was still getting ready. I decided to leave the room and get a head start on everyone. I didn't get to see the city as much because my schedule would be so jam-packed all the time. While walking through the city the atmosphere was different than usual. The whole city felt alive. Less tense. Usually. The nights were always serious and on guard but today it felt more like a festival. Another big difference was the people inside the city. Avrian was filled with mostly just nights with the few merchants here and there. Today there were people from all different cities who had come to visit. Once a year Avrian would open its gates to the surrounding cities for the tournament. Many nobles would look for talented knights to recruit into their own army or even use as guards. Not everyone at Avrian wanted to become a knight and fight on the front lines against the Shadow Plague. But due to the high prestige that Avrian Academy had, many people sent their sons and daughters to train here. Finally, I had reached the arena. Outside was jam-packed with people waiting to enter. The starting event didn't start till 9 so it was impressive to already see this many people waiting outside. Luckily there was a separate entrance for participants. Outside the participants' entrance, Many parents had come today to visit their child and wished them good luck before letting them head inside. As I walked past the crowd of people waiting to get inside. I could hear the remarks they made about me. They really allowed a redhead to enter the competition. Even his gear is red. Does he want to curse the whole city? I hear the academy has allowed other redheads to enter the competition as well. Oh how Avrian academy has fallen. Perhaps I should have sent my son to another academy this year. The comments used to bother me a bit when I was younger but I was used to it by now. It had been a while since I had gotten this type of treatment. Ever since my match with Sebastian. I didn't hear a word from the other students. Well. At least not to my face. I continued on inside and followed the signs to the waiting area for contestants. The signs lead me to an underground stairway and eventually to a huge set of double doors. When I entered my eyes were met with a huge hall. The hall was as big as the dining hall at Avrian Academy. The only difference was there were no chairs and tables. The hall was currently halfled with contestants. In total, they would be around 350 contestants competing in this tournament. Some contestants were practicing inside the hall or checking their equipment. Others had formed groups and were chatting casually. It was a mix of second and three year students and the difference in equipment was dramatic. 
it was obvious that the third years had an advantage in this tournament. Every year so far, a third year student had come out as a winner. It was an expected result. In truth, the tournament was a way to show two Nadir students that they had a long way to go. To keep them from getting lazy. My roommates still hadn't arrived and even though I spotted Harry and Jasmine around I didn't bother to go over and say hi. I wouldn't exactly say we were friends. I decided to go to an empty space in a room and practice meditating. After an hour had passed the room was beginning to fill up. The double doors opened and recognizable faces walked through. Hey. There's Ray. Kyle pointed. The entire group had come over to discuss the tournament. How did you get a space like this to yourself? Kyle asked. Even though the room was full. For some reason the space I had gone to when I first arrived never got filled. People avoided me like the plague. I think people are just avoiding me. You're like a human replant. We should start taking you to restaurants with us. Everyone had just decided to ignore Kyle's remark. Martha broke the silence by saying. I heard the first round is going to be a battle royal style fight. Slivia nodded. Yes. Usually they split the rounds into two groups. Two Nadir students first and then the third year students. The last 10 students go through to the knockout stages which are one on one. There are 10 spots. That's great. We can all go through together. Monk smiled. Martha then looked a little sad. But. That means we might end up going against each other after that. We can deal with that when the time comes. We want to prove ourselves right. Then it's something we have to do. We all know there are no personal feelings behind it. Dan said. Everyone nodded in agreement. Then Slivia put her hand out in the middle. Then let's promise to get in the top 10 spots together. Everyone then put their hand in the middle on top of Slivia's. Together. One, two, three, hurrah, we all shouted. My Dragon System. Chapter 85 Rules. While we were waiting in the hall for further instructions, a group of A. D. U. L. T. Knights came into the room. Each of them held a fairly large sack that was filled. They began going around the room handing out bracelets to each and every one of the contestants. Not much was said. We were just told we needed to wear them if we wanted to participate. The bracelet was clear like glass and slightly larger than an A. D. U. L. T's fist. Similar to my gauntlets. When we put them around our wrist it shrunk down to the perfect fit. After waiting for a little while longer. Eventually. A master knight entered through the door. It was the female master knight Rose. Rose was the leader of the green sash knights. She walked through the crowd of people to the other end of the hall. When she looked like she was ready to speak the whole room went silent. Good morning everyone. I'm here to tell you all about the rules of this tournament. The first order of business. Will ranks 1 to 5 of the third year students please come forward. Five students who I had never seen before went over to where Rose was standing. T reminded me of Harry. When the two of us had thought he showed me the number on his communicator he was only rank 50. These students standing there now were considered the strongest at the academy. Next. Will the ranks 1 to 5 of the second year students please come forward. Gary. Slivia. Ian Monk and Dan all went forward to line up. There wasn't much change in the ranking system from the first year to the second year. Dan and Monk had always been slowly creeping their way up the ladder of the ranks. When our room eventually held the top five spots. They agreed to not fight each other. Everyone had become good friends and thought there was no point to switch places between ranks. Right now. It was different though. Everyone wanted to show the audience outside what skills they had learned. The 10 students standing here will be seated. They will not participate in the first round and will go straight through to the knockout stages. The students began to get rowdy. What the hell? Kyle said. Didn't we just make a pact? They already made it through. Rose decided to ignore the complaining students and continued talking. You might be wondering what the devices on your wrist are for. In a moment you should all see a number display on them. As I looked towards my wrist a green figure could be seen, 100 HP, written across the bracelet. The first round of the competition will be a battle royal. The second year students will participate first. The last five students remaining will go on ahead to the knockout stages. She then lifted one of the bracelets in the air. This is your winning ticket. In the battle royal, you will only be permitted to use the regular wooden training equipment. For each hit you take this number will go down. When the number reaches zero, you will be eliminated from the tournament. 
Rose then pointed towards Martha. Martha will you please join me? Martha quickly ran over to Rose's position. Rose then handed Martha a wooden bow with a blunt wooden arrow. Rose then started to look at the second year students that were lined up and pointed at Ian. Big guy. You look like you can take a little pain. I want you to stand in front of Martha and let her shoot you. Martha readied her bow and chose to aim the arrow towards Ian's abs. Martha shot the arrow and it bounced right off Ian's body. As you can see the student has taken no damage but if we look at his bracelet. It now says 9-0 HP. We want the students to show their skill in the first round. Not their wealth or luck. This will put you all on an even playing field. The first round is all about skill. Now Martha would you please take a shot using key. Martha again took a shot at Ian. This time infusing key into her bow and arrow. Now his bracelet displays the number 70. The stronger the attack the more HP is taken. If Ian had blocked using key it would counteract that and just to the normal 10 points of damage. That is all you need to know for the first round. The students were then asked to put their equipment in a storage room and then meet back in the hall. They asked me to take off my gauntlets as well due to the sharp fingertips. I was only allowed to take in the armor I was wearing. In the storage room, there was a room full of wooden equipment with all types of weapons. Axes, maces, bows, everything. I went over and just picked up a regular old short sword. The ten seated students were taken somewhere else since there was no need for them to be there. From the hallway, we were further escorted down a huge tunnel. The tunnel went on for about five minutes and at the end of it, we could see a bright light. As soon as we went into the bright light we were welcomed with a roar of cheers. It felt like the whole ground was shaking. The whole arena was completely packed with people. There was a special seating area where the six elders sat and the master knights as well. Just underneath them were two squire masters who had a crystal microphone connected. Welcome ladies and gentlemen we will now begin the opening round of the Avrian Academy tournament. As the man spoke into the crystal it was magnified so the whole audience could hear. The students were asked to spread out all over the arena. There was around 150 of us total on the ground floor. As I went into my open space, I couldn't help but shake the feeling that the other players were looking at me. The first round will be a battle royal style. The last five students remaining will go through to the next round. A hologram screen suddenly appeared above the fighting arena. As you can see here. The audience is able to see the HP of every single contestant. Once the HP counter of a contestant reaches zero, they will be eliminated. Now let's get ready to start in. The whole audience started to count down together. 3, 2, 1. My Dragon System. Chapter 86 Fierce Ray. As soon as the fight had started, the 10 people closest to Ray dashed towards him. Ray had a feeling that the other participants were watching him and he was right. They had planned to attack him together from the very beginning knowing Ray was too strong to defeat on their own. As the first man swung at Ray with a sword, Ray instinctively put his arm up to block the strike. But as soon as the sword touched Ray's arm, his bracelet's number display changed. 1-0 HP. Although the strike didn't hurt Ray at all, the system had counted the strike as a clean hit since the wooden sword made direct contact with his skin. Ray was currently using Ki to reinforce the strength of his skin but the first round was about skill. Not strength. Ray finally understood the words of Rose and thought that this would be difficult. It wouldn't be hard for Ray if he only needed to beat all the contestants but to do so without getting hit would be troublesome. The man who attacked Ray was speechless. When his sword touched Ray's skin, it felt like he was hitting against a solid bar of steel. Ray quickly grabbed the man's wrist and twisted it causing him to drop his sword. The other men all rushed in ready to strike Ray at once hoping to get rid of him quickly. Ray saw this and grabbed the other man's wrist. The man tried to struggle away but Ray's strength was too monstrous. As the others came closer to attack, he lifted the man's body using him as a human shield. Each strike hit the man all over. His bracelet pinged constantly and started to display numerous notifications. 1-0 HP. 1-0 HP. Until the number had eventually reached zero. The men stopped attacking so Ray threw his meat shield to one side. And we have the first contestant to be eliminated. The announcer shouted. The crowd started to boo. They thought Ray's tactic of using another person as a human shield was dirty. As the score on the man's bracelet reached zero. A bright white light started to shine around his whole body and teleported him away. 
The bracelet was engraved with teleportation magic. It was set to teleport the students to a medical site near the arena once their points reached zero. Ray was trying to figure out why these men had grouped up and aimed for him. Were they from Pureblood? Or did they agree beforehand to group up together? Ray then took a closer look at the men that were facing him. He recognized their faces well. It had been a while but he had promised himself that he would never forget their faces. One of the men who stood at the center and in front of the rest was one of the first ones to throw an object at Ray. The men currently attacking Ray were one of the groups that had put a lot of money on the fight between Gary and Monk. When Ray had stopped the fight, the group had promised they would get their revenge one day but after seeing the fight between Ray and Sebastian, they knew they were not strong enough on their own. They had been waiting for this opportunity to strike Ray together. They couldn't do this in the academy as they only allowed one-on-one -on -one battles. So this was their chance. What they didn't count on was how much stronger Ray had gotten in that time. Ray had been planning to hold back in the tournament. Not wanting to draw any attention to himself. But their actions had brought back painful memories. After the attack by Pureblood. Ray wasn't going to let anyone off easy. Another man charged forward. Ray struck at his legs before he could even attack. The man stood still for a while and then completely collapsed screaming in pain. His legs had been broken so badly that the bone was sticking out. Ray charged at the other eight men taking them down in one blow. It was so fast they didn't even have time to strike back. Ray made sure to strike them with just enough strength to do damage but not to kill them. A few broken bones the academy would be able to heal but a death they wouldn't easily forgive. Nine men currently laid on the floor rolling around scream in pain. The audience was greatly confused. Why hadn't they been teleported away like the man earlier? As they looked on the display they could see why. The men currently on the floor only had 2-0 HP taken away from them. The battle system and counted each strike as a key strike from Ray. Causing only 20 points of damage. What the academy didn't expect was someone who was able to completely overpower the other students to the point where they could defeat them with one blow. The crowd started to become rowdy. That child is a devil. How could he hurt people like that? He should have never been allowed in the competition in the first place. He's fighting dirty. What kind of parents raised him? As the man in the crowd said these words, Ray turned around and stared directly at him. His eyes were fierce. The man started to sweat. Fear started to grow in his heart. There was a good distance of around 100 meters between Ray and him. How could Ray have possibly heard him and knew exactly where he was the man thought? Although it seemed impossible. There was no doubt in the man's mind that Ray was staring directly at him. He's a monster. The man stood up and pointed. The six elders were currently sitting up in a separate seating compartment to the rest of the audience. Discussing the events that were happening. Should we do something about the boy? One of the elders proposed. The people call him dirty. Yet they see nothing wrong with ten people ganging up on one. The old man countered. What if he is to kill a student? An elder asked. You have my word that my student will not go that far. The old man promised. The old man had felt close to Ray. So much so that he treated Ray like his own son. He thought he knew Ray well and even though he said those words. He didn't believe in them himself. The anger he was currently sensing from Ray frightened him. Author note. As you can tell this chapter was written in the third person rather than the first person. In the tournament. There are a lot of viewpoints and rules that need to be explained which would be extremely difficult in the first person. In the past. I have switched between first and third person but this tournament arc is simply too long. I wanted to get audience feedback. If you don't mind the third person writing I can stick with this for now and revert back at a later time. Or stick to the third person for the rest of the novel. Please let me know what you think. My Dragon System. Chapter 87 Number 1. Gary. Slivia. Monk. Ian and Dan were currently standing together on the top level of the arena. It was the highest viewing point but there were no seats and only contestants were allowed to be there. Their group and many other third year students were currently watching the match below. The group had just witnessed Ray's brutal beating of the ten students. Slivia could see the anger in Ray's eyes and was starting to get worried. I don't understand. Could none of those students use key? Dan asked. They were using key, Slivia replied. It's just that Ray's key was simply far too overpowering that they weren't able to do anything. Slivia was currently using key to activate the cells in her eyes. 
This gave her a second type of vision where she could see the key flow of other students. It was similar to Ray's dragon eyes but a much weaker version of it. All she could tell was Ray's key was incredibly strong and currently running wild. He must have been hiding his strength from us. I hope the students aren't too badly hurt. Ian said. They deserve it. Everyone single one of them. Gary replied. Everyone was surprised to see Gary say something. He hadn't spoken to them or anyone much since the death of his sister. Did they really think they could do something against him just because it was 10 against 1? Gary laughed. You guys might not remember but I remember that Big knows well. They were the ones who started the riot when Monk and I fought and it looks like Ray remembers them well. I just hope he doesn't go too far. Monk said remembering what happened to Sebastian. Gary didn't say much more. But in truth, he didn't care if all of them died. It was probably people like this that went up against his sister. They tried to use the school's rules as a way to justify their actions. A group of third years standing by the edge were also watching the arena. Is that the guy you were talking about Harry? Jack asked. Yes. When he was only a third year student and he had no idea of key. His strike almost hit me. I knew he would grow into a monster but I didn't expect this. Jack started to smile. His heartbeat started to pound harder and faster. Jack wanted to jump over the railings and fight Ray now but he knew the time for the two of them to meet would come. Jack was currently ranked the number one student in the whole of Avrian Academy. He had an athletic body chiseled as if he was the son of the god of war and the looks to go with it. His short black hair complemented his masculine eyebrows and square jawline. People would think the divine being had given him the blessings of beauty. But the ones that knew Jack well knew it was more like a blessing of a warrior. Jack only cared for one thing, fighting. He loved to fight and wanted to just fight strong opponents. He knew the line of good and bad though. This was drilled into him by his parents. To satisfy his hunger for fighting. He decided to join Avrian on the front line against the Shadow Plague. The strongest foe known to man. Jerry is there anyone that interests you? Harry asked. Jerry was standing right by Jack. She was a muscular girl who looked like she had been raised by wild animals. She had purple wavy hair and the body of an Amazon warrior. Why ask if you already know the answer? Harry just smiled back at Cherry. The five people passing this exam have already been decided. Harry and the others already knew what Cherry was talking about. Watching the fight, it was easy to see that there were currently five students who were outperforming the rest in the arena. The first one was Ray. Many students were now staying clear of him after his performance. The next two were Sloth and Badger. They were using a pair of weapons called the Katar. They were similar to daggers only there were no hilts. You held a long bar that then extended into a triangle blade. The two twins were quick with their hands and worked well together. They would often use a display or acrobats to avoid oncoming opponents and attack others. The next one that had caught the third year student's eyes was Kyle. Kyle was currently using a variation of the chain and weight as his weapon. He was skillfully using it to keep a good distance away from his opponents. The long range of the weapon made it difficult for anyone to get close. Lastly was Martha. She had the great sense of timing of when to strike and when to not. Using the bodies of others to avoid getting hit. Every time she would take a shot at someone. She would move so others didn't know of her position. As long as these five didn't decide to go against each other. Everyone was sure that they would go through to the next round. While Gary was busy looking at the fight from above, he heard a female voice call out his name. Gary over here. Jasmine waved. Then she signaled for Gary to come over and join her. Who's the pretty girl? Dan asked. I've never seen her before. Slivia replied. Monk what about you? Who me? No. Never. I don't even know who you're talking about. Monk was terrible at keeping secrets and judging by his reactions everyone knew Monk was hiding something. As Gary came over, Jasmine and he moved to a quiet place where no one was around. She then whispered in his ear. Do you remember that underground cave we went to? Behind the red door, Gary was suddenly interested in what she had to say. Well I started having dreams about it. I was getting obsessed then I found out something, I found another way in. Another entrance apart from the red door. Gary was suddenly very interested. My Dragon System. Chapter 88 Betrayal. Ray currently stood in the center of the arena looking at the nine men on the floor rolling about. For some reason even though they were suffering. Ray's anger wasn't settling down. 
it was as if another part of his body had taken over. Every time he would hit one of them, images of Amy, images of Gary being hurt by pure blood, and images of Monk when he was hurt by Sebastian would flash through his head. These types of people didn't deserve to live. Ray started walking over to the person closest to him. Everyone was watching in anticipation wondering what he was going to do. The boy's going to kill them. I'm telling you we need to get him out of there. One of the elders demanded. The old man remained silent and decided to just watch intently. Slivia and the rest were also holding their breath. Wondering what Ray would do next. Ray bent down to the person closest to him and said. You will never be able to use key. Ever again. Ray then placed his hand on top of the man's chest. Activating skill mana drain. Mana pool 1. Mana pool 1. Mana has successfully been completely drained. Only two. Ray said. Slivia and the old man couldn't believe their eyes. The two of them were truly worried about what Ray would do. They activated the key in their eyes and what they saw blew their mind. It looked like the key was escaping from one body and going into Ray's. Once Ray had completely absorbed the man's key, he gently hit the contestant until his bracelet displayed the number zero. The white light surrounded the man and teleported him away. The elders and the whole crowd watching were relived. They were holding the breath until the very last moment. Looks like you were right about the boy. He isn't harming the students any further. An elder said. The old man laughed nervously. The other elders weren't fighters like the old man so they had no clue what just happened but the old man was afraid that others might have seen the same thing he did. Especially members of pure blood. Ray continued going to each contestant that was lying on the floor and performed the skill mana drain on them. Mana pool 1. Mana pool 1. After absorbing 8 contestants, Ray had currently gained an additional 11 mana points. Bringing his total mana pool to 21. Ray started walking over to the last person on the floor. Most of the contestants had been eliminated at this point. Only a few had seen what Ray had done and decided to not go against him. A girl named Sarah spotted Ray in the middle of the arena draining the last man on the floor. Seeing Ray kneeling next to the man, she thought that Ray was an easy target. She readied her bow and aimed directly at Ray's back. The arrow flew through the air and bounced of Ray as if it was hitting a solid wall. 80 HP Ray's bracelet now displayed. Ray ignored the shot and continued to absorb the last contestant's key. Then when it finally finished his points were now at 22. Ray quickly tapped the man with key four times sending him off to teleport away. Ray stood up and turned around. He could see Sarah standing there with her bow. For some reason when looking into Ray's eyes. Sarah could feel a shiver run down her spine. She rapidly shot more arrows in Ray's direction. Ray slowly walked towards her avoiding each arrow strike by a narrow margin until he finally just a few feet away. Sarah was shaking. She went to her quiver to get another arrow. When she looked down, she realized her quiver was empty. She no longer had any arrows. When she looked up to look at Ray again, he was already directly in front of her. Ray grabbed Sarah by the head and started the mana drain process. No one knew what Ray was doing but Sarah could feel her energy seeping away from her. She was too frightened to move in case Ray would do something even worse. An audience member stood up from the crowd and shouted. Get your hands off my daughter you monster. Ray looked over in the direction the voice was coming from. It was the same man who had said. What kind of parents raised him? Images of Ray's father popped up in his head. How the kingdom had abandoned him when he had thought on the front lines for all those years. How when he was infected by the shadow plague the kingdom didn't send anyone to help his poor mother. Ray pulled his fist back ready to punch Sarah in the stomach. Sarah closed her eyes as she waited for the outcome she couldn't avoid. Suddenly. Before Ray could move his fist forward. A chain wrapped around his fist and started to pull back against it. As he looked back. He saw Kyle holding on to the chain. Then the two twins Badger and Sloth came and pulled Sarah back away from Ray. Lastly, Martha was there pointing her arrow towards Ray. What is this about? Ray shouted. Ray just leave it, Kyle responded. Look I understand the people before deserved it. But she has done nothing wrong. She is just a contestant. Ray please. This isn't like you. Martha cried. The four of them had been watching Ray's actions for a while now. In the middle of the match. They had made a pact with the twins agreeing that the five of them would go on to the next round. The twins liked Ray and looked up to him. Whenever the Dragon Knight training would happen. 
Ray would often encourage them when they were feeling down or couldn't succeed at something. When all the contestants were eventually defeated, they turned around to see Ray holding Sarah. They knew something was wrong with him. The pressure coming from Ray was frightening and sickly. They all acted without even needing to speak to each other. What do you guys even know about me? Ray shouted back. My dragon system. Chapter 89 Untreatable. Slivia couldn't help herself as she watched Ray. Tears started to roll down her cheek. What's wrong? Monk asked. Can't you see? Ray's not angry. He's sad. Ray had a feeling in his chest that wouldn't disappear. No matter what he did the feeling seemed to stay there. He originally thought he wanted revenge. That's what he was doing now but why wasn't the feeling going away? Then Ray realized something. Every time he would start to trust or care for people. The world would torture him in some way. The world had given him a second chance. And through that second chance. He saw how cruel humans truly were. Not just to beasts or dragons but to themselves. He wanted to trust humans. He wanted to find a place he could call home. If he had been given the chance to just live a peaceful life then everything might have turned out fine. But the world didn't want him to. The world showed him what humans were like. It gave him red hair and he saw the discrimination people gave. Then it tested him again. When he chose to save two lives. He nearly lost his own. When his father had been infected. No one came to help. Now it seemed like everyone was out to kill him and anyone who got close to him. Even Amy who he had only met briefly. As Ray stood in the arena in silence. The group thought they had been successful in getting through to Ray. Suddenly Ray pulled on the chain. That was wrapped around on his right hand. Kyle tried to resist but ended up being dragged through the air. As Kyle flew close to him. Ray jumped up and slammed him on the floor with his two fists. Kyle lay motionless at Ray's feet. Ray slowly bent down and whispered in Kyle's ear. You need to take your training more seriously. Focus your key. Martha reacted to the sudden turn of events by firing off three arrows in the air. Ray not only dodged them but grabbed two of the arrows and threw them towards either side of Martha. If Martha moved, she would be hit by her own arrows. Ray dashed forward and punched Martha in the stomach. As her body slowly slumped to the ground, Ray whispered, Don't hesitate. Predict where I will go. Not where I am. The two twins came charging in at Ray together. Ray imbued his left foot with key and smashed the ground. Causing pieces of the arena to fly through the air. He punched two of the bigger pieces. Launching them forward and they crashed into the twins. As the twins laid there on the floor. Ray casually walked up to them. It's good to be brave but without a plan. You're just throwing your lives away. The crowd had never seen a student display such dominance in the arena before. They had just seen Ray take out four of the best students Avrian Academy had. How is this guy not in the top five rankings? The other students must be crazy strong. One of the third year students said. Nearly all of the third year students were staring at Slivia and her group. If Ray wasn't qualified to be in the top five then these five here must truly be monsters. The whole group wanted to dig a hole to hide themselves in. They knew what everyone was thinking but it simply wasn't true. Every single one of them knew Ray was the strongest out of the second years. If it wasn't for the fact that they wanted to see the outcome of the match. They would have already disappeared. Sarah was the last one currently standing in the arena. The other four students were too hurt to move. Ray had only hit each of them once causing 20 points of damage. Which wasn't enough to send them away. Ray slowly walked over to Sarah. He focused the key to his fingertips and tapped her on the head four times. As the bracelet started to glow, a white light surrounded her. I'm sorry, Ray consoled. The announcers were so shocked by the whole event that they hadn't been commentating on anything for the last 15 minutes of the fight. Ladies and gentlemen we have our five contenders going into the next round. A massive roar started to build up. The whole arena started to shake once more. The crowd couldn't help but cheer and shout praises. Even if they didn't agree with his early methods. They couldn't help but praise his fighting skills. The next round will start in an hour. While we take our time to repair the stadium. Please use this time to buy snacks and go to the toilet. You don't want to miss anything. For the next round. We have the third year students. The bracelets started to glow around the five that were still in the arena. After the white light surrounded them. They were all transported to another large hall. Ray and the others found themselves surrounded by the participants. 
many of them were lying down on the floor with a bed and a medical personal next to them. The academy was currently healing the contenders. Even though Ray was practically undamaged from the fight, the medical personal still wanted to take a look at him. Currently, in the elder's seating area, they were talking about Ray. It looks like he might be the boy in the prophecy after all. Yes. And did you see his angry outburst? He will bring doom to us all. With the right guidance he will save us. Do you want to kick the boy out? That is perhaps the very reason he will try to take us all out in the first place. The elders carried on to quibble and argue with each other. Then Wilfred had appeared and walked over to the old man. He whispered to the old man. I did as you asked and had a look at the students. It seems you were right. They can no longer gather their key. The doctors say it might be temporary but I fear for the worst. The old man and Wilfred were worried. They needed to do everything in power to avoid anyone catching word of this. My Dragon System. Chapter 90 Fixing the Family. After watching Ray fight, Gary felt tense all over his body. He was itching to get out and move. All he wanted to do right now was swing his sword at something. He was kind of jealous that the other participants got to fight while he had to stay up here and watch. Gary knew more than anyone how strong Ray truly was but seeing it now in front of him. Gary felt like he was just falling further and further behind. But what scared Gary more than anything, was there were even stronger people and beasts than him out there. If he wanted to punish the people who had killed his sister, then he needed to become strong enough to take on anyone that got in his way. Nobles hired many talented knights as guards and some even had their own army. Gary wasn't just planning on taking out the person who killed his sister but every single one related to them as well. He wanted them to feel the same pain as he did. As the match finished, Gary started to walk off away from the group. He needed to get some swings in to calm himself down. He walked off without saying a word. Slivia tried to go after him but Martha grabbed her by the arm to stop her. It's best if we just let him deal with it himself. Gary's strong. Remember last time he eventually got out of that right? When he truly needs our help. That's when we'll come to get him. Slivia understood Martha's words but she couldn't help but get the feeling that this small little family she had built was starting to fall apart and as she was the leader. She was the one who needed to fix it. Gary arrived at the training hall. It was a place for participants to practice before their upcoming fight. All of the second-year students had just finished fighting so currently only the third-year students were inside waiting to be called for the next event. Gary wanted to blow off some steam and the training dolls in the training room were perfect for that exact thing. Gary activated one of the training dolls at the highest levels and started hacking away at it. The onlookers were impressed. Gary managed to avoid every strike while dealing a strike back in a fatal position. Gary was unaware but currently. Many of the third-year students were watching him practice. He's the number one ranked student out of the second years. What do you think of him? Harry. A third-year student asked. The other one is more my type. Harry replied. The boy looks good. His style reminds me of yours. He might actually be even better. Cherry said with a slight smile. Harry knew that Cherry was trying to rile him up. But it still worked. Harry slowly started to walk closer to where Gary was training with the doll. After five minutes of impressive sword work and pinpoint accuracy, Gary decided to take a break. As soon as he did, Harry walked over to the same training doll. He drew his sword and activated the training doll to the same level as Gary. The doll started and so did Harry. Harry started slashing and avoiding the doll strike continually. After a while, people realized what Harry was doing. He was currently displaying the exact same moves that Gary had performed. Every single dodge and strike back. Were exactly the same. On the last strike. Harry infused his sword key and whacked the doll's head towards Gary. The doll's head went flying through the air and Gary moved his head at the last second. It was easier than I thought. Harry said looking towards Gary. The third year students didn't know what to say. They had known Harry for the longest time and he was only ranked 50 in the student rankings. He was a good fighter but not at the level where he could do something like that. The others started to wonder if Harry had been hiding his strength this whole time. If you want a fight, you just have to ask. Gary then pulled out his sword and started walking over to Harry. The third year students were getting excited. They couldn't wait to see a battle between two skilled swordsmen. The two were only a short distance away from each other and it looked like at any second they would clash heads. Just then, 
A female's voice could be heard. There you are. Slivia shouted. Slivia came rushing over and grabbed Gary by the hand. Come on. The third year's round is about to start let's get going. Slivia said as she dragged Gary out of the room. Slivia had been peeking through the door for a while now. Thinking of what to say to Gary. Then she saw that Gary was currently going to get into a fight. If he did. Then he would have been disqualified from the tournament. At the last second. She had no choice but to barge in and save him. While being dragged away by Slivia. Gary realized the grave mistake he could have just committed. If he couldn't compete in the tournament it meant he wouldn't be in the top 5. Thank you. Gary said. Hey. I'm the leader right? It's my job to keep you guys all safe. Slivia and Gary had arrived at where the rest of the group currently were. They were standing on the balcony of the arena getting ready for the next round to start at any moment. When Slivia looked at the group she noticed that someone was missing, that was Ray. Ray should have long been released by the medical team by now. Especially since he hadn't received any injuries. Slivia went running around everywhere looking for Ray. She checked every location she could think of. Finally. While running around the hallways she spotted Ray talking to Wilfred just outside the elder's temporary room. She quickly hid around the corridor corner not wanting to interrupt their conversation. What did you just say Ray? Wilfred shouted. Ray repeated himself once more. I want to drop out of the tournament. My dragon system. Chapter 91 Third Year Winners. Slivia could no longer hear the conversation between Ray and Wilfred. After that shocking reveal, it seemed like the two had quieted down to discuss something. After a back and forth between the two of them, they eventually parted ways and Ray started to make his way back. As Ray turned the corner, he spotted Slivia there. Did you hear the conversation between Wilfred and me? Ray asked. Only a little. Well, don't worry about it, Ray said as he continued to walk off. Wait. Slivia shouted. I know you feel bad about what you did. But no one blames you. The others told me what you said to them. You were just trying to help them. Ray stayed silent for a little while before he decided to reply. Do you know why I acted like that? I don't know why. But all I know is you looked sad. Ray then felt something in his chest again. He finally came to the realization he wasn't angry. He was sad. He didn't want to admit it to himself this whole time but the death of Amy had affected him more than he thought. Gary's sister died. She was, now that I think about it. I don't know why I was so stubborn. Perhaps because she was a human. I didn't want to believe it. But she was my first friend. Slivia understood. She had heard the stories from the other red-haired children about how they grew up. How they were outcasted and treated like children of Sen. From just these words she could tell that Amy meant a lot to him. The one thing Slivia was stumped on was when Ray said, because she was a human. But Slivia simply thought Ray had misspoken. Slivia then held out her hand. You're not alone Ray. Ray thought about it for a while. Perhaps if he hadn't been so stubborn with himself and accepted the humans around him as friends. Then maybe he could do something about it. In the past, he wasn't able to protect the people he cared about. But right now, there were people right next to him that he wanted to protect. Humans were cruel but Ray found out not all of them were. Some deserved to be punished and Ray would continue to do so. But there were also those that Ray now wanted to protect. Ray held Sylvia's hand and said. Thank you. Slivia blushed a little before letting go and the two of them carried on walking to meet up with the others. The two of them had finally arrived at the balcony with the others. Slivia your face is a little red. Did something happen between the two of you? Martha asked jokingly. Slivia head was now so hot it looked like steam was about to emit from it. No. No I found him in the hall and we just got here. Just then the announcers started to speak. Ladies and gentlemen thank you for waiting. It is time for the next event to begin. It will now be starting in 3, 2, 1, go. The match began and everyone's eyes were now focused on down below. Hey Gary. I don't see your girlfriend anywhere. Dan said. Gary was slightly confused by Dan's comment. He's talking about Jasmine. Monk replied. Just then everyone turned and smiled at Monk. Oh. So it looks like you do know something about her. Dan said. Gary started to look around the arena for Jasmine but he too couldn't see her. Relax. She's just a third year black sash knight. She helped us out at training a few times that's all. Gary said while he was still trying to find her. Martha pouted. So boring. 
You guys need to start thinking about romance once in while instead of swords all the time. Ray started to focus and try to find Jasmine himself. It was hard for him to see but eventually. He found a space in the arena where it was slightly distorted. Jasmine had gotten better at using her black sash skills but so did Ray. As the match continued, many contestants were quickly eliminated. Just like with the second years, there seemed to be a big difference in power between those in the top 10 compared to the rest of the academy. Is there anyone that catches your eye Gary? Slivia asked as she could see Gary was clearly focused on someone. The blonde boy at the back. Gary was currently focused on Harry. Surprisingly Harry was currently the only student on the field who still had all of his HP. He hadn't been hit once. Even Jasmine who had been hiding had been hit by a stray arrow and lost some HP. Harry's style of fighting was beautiful. His swordsmanship was almost like a dance. He would be able to lead his opponents into the right place to attack and once he had them where he wanted. He would make quick work of them hitting all the vital parts. Yes. He's very impressive. His style reminds me of yours a little bit. But different at the same time. While you attack more instinctively. It seems like his style if more planned. Slivia replied. Gary didn't know about Harry but he knew about himself. He couldn't quite explain it but when he fought against people. Sometimes these white lines would just show up telling him where to strike. The white lines occasionally appeared on a body or creature and as long as he followed that path. He would do critical damage. It wouldn't happen all the time but only in situations where he was desperate. The last time Gary experienced this was when he was fighting the pureblood member. Gary had been training every day since to try to get the same feeling to come again. He was hoping if he found a way to activate it at will. Then he would be unstoppable. We have our five winners. Currently. Standing in the ring were the five contestants that would go through to the elimination rounds. Harry had shown the most skill with his sword work. The next was a contender named Geo. He was a giant for his age and his main weapon was a two-handed axe. There were also two female warriors who worked together named Violet and Aqua. The two of them were sisters who used a metal fan to fight. Everyone in the arena was slightly confused. They could only see four in the ring, Harry, Geo, Violet and Aqua. But then suddenly dark shadows started to form in the center of the arena. Once the shadows had disappeared, out came Jasmine. These were the five students going into the next round. My Dragon System. Chapter 92 Who vs Who. The first round of the tournament had finished and the third year students were taken to the medical bay. Once everyone was healed up. They asked the ten winning students from each year to meet back out on the arena. Currently standing in the arena form the second year students were Gary. Slivia. Dan. Martha. Monk. Kyle. Ian. Ray. Badger and Sloth. They looked at each other and smiled. Each of them had managed to keep their promise with each other and made it through to the next round. Standing on the other side were the third year students. Jack, Cherry, Harry, Jasmine were the ones that the others recognized. The others were Geo, Nay, Violet and Aqua. The last person hadn't arrived on the field yet but was the second rank student named Killer. Wilfred was stood in the center with a holographic display behind him. Unfortunately. Killer can't make it due to personal matters but we are here today to congratulate these 20 fine students. The best of the best at Avrian Academy. The crowd cheered even louder than they had done before. Each and every one of the students had displayed an amazing level of skill. The audience thought that these were the best and strongest students they had seen at Avrian before and they hadn't even witnessed the top 5 of each year fight yet. Many of the people in the audience were nobles and they were sure to send their sons and daughters to Avrian Academy as soon as they could. Wilfred cleared his throat before he continued speaking. For the next round, we have a surprise for you all. The second year students have exceeded our expectations and have been the best we have seen since the start of Avrian Academy. We have decided to change things from the usual routine of past tournaments. Behold. Wilfred pointed to a large holographic display behind him. Then a bracket sheet had appeared with each and every one of the students' names and who their opponent was that they were facing. The holographic screen displayed this. Martha vs. Cherry. Gary vs. Harry. Monk vs. Jasmine. Ian vs. Geo. Kyle vs. Nay. Dan vs. Arthur. Ray vs. Killer. Badger vs. Violet. Sloth vs. Aqua. Slivia vs. Jack. The second year students' eyes looked like they were about pop out of their skull. 
we have decided to have the second year students face off against the third year students. The winners of each fight will earn a place in the Avrian Academy team to the All Kingdom tournament. Ray had known about this beforehand. While Wilfred and Ray were talking, Wilfred had informed of his plans to Ray. Wilfred managed to convince Ray to stay in the tournament. Wilfred couldn't explain why but simply said it had something to do with pure blood. This got Ray interested in. In the end, he decided to take part. Gary was pleased he would get the chance to face Harry. Ever since their encounter in the training room, Gary wanted to fight Harry more than anyone else. And as if someone could hear his wishes, he was granted this fight. If he had known that Harry had once beaten Ray, Gary would have been even more excited. Slivia, on the other hand, was the most concerned. She currently had to face the strongest person at the academy. Jack. Slivia had never been confident in her one-on-one -on -one skills. She knew she had a tough battle ahead of her. Slivia felt like she currently had the whole world on her shoulders. She looked into the crowd and she could see her five older siblings looking at her back. She needed to prove to her family that she wasn't worthless just because she didn't have magic. Monk was going up against Jasmine. Monk knew Jasmine's skills well she was exceptionally good at using the Black Sash skills. Before he knew about Jasmine, Monk took pride in being the best at learning the Black Sash skills. If Monk wanted to get better, he knew he needed to beat her. Ray wasn't too concerned. He knew whoever he would be facing, he would most likely defeat with ease. He had more key than ever now. After absorbing the 10 students he had an additional 21 mana points in his mana pool. When he had 10, he was able to defeat an intermediate beast in one shot. The first match will begin tomorrow at midday. Please enjoy your time in the city and everyone get a good rest. The joyous mood between Ray's group was quickly replaced with seriousness. Everyone had their opponent on their mind. The walk back to the dorm was near enough silent. When the group eventually reached the academy, everyone started to split off in spurate directions, saying they needed to train. In the end, Ray was the only one left in the room. Ray went to lie down and rest on his bed. When he put his hand under his pillow to get some sleep, he felt a piece of paper. He pulled out the piece of paper which read, Meet me at the arena at 9 o'clock. Ray started to wonder who had left the message. He could only think that it had to be someone from the academy. Then one thought came to his mind. Pure blood. Perhaps this was a trap set up by them. Although Wilfred had told Ray to come to him if anything like this happened. Ray chose not to. Ray wasn't afraid though. Ray estimated that his current strength was probably on par with anyone they could hire as a bodyguard for him. It was nearly time for the meeting at 9 p.m. There were guards stationed outside the arena but it was easy for Ray to avoid detection and sneak in. When he finally arrived at the arena, the field was completely empty. The guards were only stationed on the outside. There was not a soul inside. Ray eventually went down to the center of the arena and waited. Then a voice was heard. I finally get to speak to you. He said. As Ray turned around, he recognized it was Jack. The number one ranked student in the academy. My dragon system. Chapter 93 Strong Body. As Ray turned around, he could see Jack standing there. Jack didn't wear much armor. He had a leather sleeveless vest on and just some standard trousers. But the one thing that did stand out on Jack was the giant great sword he held on his back. It looked like it had been carved from a giant magical beast tooth. The sword was the same size as Jack himself. Ray could tell that Jack wasn't like the other students. His dragon eyes were telling him differently. While most master knights were able to control their aura and key making it hard for Ray to tell how strong they were. Jack was just letting all of the energy flow out of him and currently. It was running wild. I finally get to meet you. It's a shame that the two of us didn't get matched up together. Which means this may be the only chance we get to fight. Jack then pulled his great sword from his back. The giant sword looked weightless in Jack's hand. So. Is that why you sent that note? So. The two of us would battle. You're not a member of Pureblood. Are you? Although Ray asked these questions. He didn't expect Jack to admit it. Ray wanted to see if Jack's reaction would change at the mention of Pureblood. Note. What note? I simply spotted you and decided to follow. What a perfect place you chose to have our showdown. Ray was then slightly confused. If Jack didn't send that note. Then that meant someone else did. Enough talking let's go. Jack suddenly charged in towards Ray. As Jack's giant great sword came down. 
Ray infused his key into his gauntlets. The two of them clashed sending waves of power through the arena. I knew you were strong. Jack exclaimed. The excitement in his eyes growing with each passing moment. Jack had expected the great sword to slice right through the gauntlets or even for Ray to have dodged. Instead, he decided to take it head on. Ray felt the strength behind Jack's attack and thought it felt like that of the Minotaur. The two were currently in a stalemate of power with neither one budging. But then, something caught Ray's eye. Behind Jack, a dark figure appeared. It was fully dressed in black beast armor but one thing stood out, the red mask. Would you like to use your mana? Yes. Ray shouted. Now with the extra mana supplementing his key. He threw the giant blade with Jack up to one side and went straight for the man in the red mask. Ray threw a fist out at the man with all his extra key. The red mask man brought out a spear using the pole to block the attack. The pole bent backwards but just when it looked like it was about to give. It bounced back reflecting the force back onto Ray. Ray was sent flying backwards around 10 feet. Ray then dug his hand using his fingertips into the ground to try to stop the momentum. Still, he carried on being dragged back a few feet until he eventually stopped. What in the? Ray was taken aback. He thought in his current state. There wouldn't be many people who could take the full force of his punch like that. Then the red masked man dashed towards Ray with the spear to finish him off. But before the red masked man could even move a few feet. A giant great sword came smashing down into the ground stopping the red masked man. What are you doing getting in the way of my fight? Jack demanded. He then pointed his great sword at the red masked man's head. You look strong. Fight me. The red masked man tried moving around Jack trying to get to Ray. He would strike with his spear making Jack block then try to maneuver around him. But Jack was strong. He wasn't going to let the red masked man go that easy. Every time the masked man would move, Jack would swing his great sword blocking the red man's path. The red masked man then made a signal with his hand. Suddenly, five men in the red masks descended into the arena around Ray. While the leader was preoccupied with Jack, the other five men charged at Ray. Jack and the leader resumed their fight. Despite Jack's power and accuracy with his sword, the leader was always one step ahead of him and Jack's strikes would miss the leader by a few inches. The leader was simply too fast for Jack. Then when the leader saw an opening, he went for a stab with his spear. As the tip of the spear hit Jack's body, the spear started to bend. You really think, you can hurt me. Jack patronized as he took another swing at the leader. The leader jumped back a few steps. Jack wasn't going to give the leader any time to rest. With Jack's reinforced body he had nothing to worry about. He could swing as he wished knowing he wouldn't get hurt. Jack had an abnormal amount of ki from a young age. The problem was he was never able to control it. Unlike others, Jack wasn't able to control his ki to specific parts of his body or into the weapons he used. Instead, his ki was always active all around his body. Any other kid with this amount of ki from a young age would have died but Jack's body was one of a kind. Jack took another swing at the leader. This time it was too fast for the leader to avoid. The leader lifted up his spear as he did against Ray. Unlike with Ray, the leader was sent flying through the air. The momentum from Jack's strike propelled the leader skidding across the ground until he crashed into the arena walls. The leader was confused. The spear had an ability to reflect any key back onto the user attacking it. This was why it was so effective on Ray. Why didn't it work on Jack? The leader thought. This was because Jack never used any key in his strikes in the first place. He didn't know how to. As the leader stood up, his face mask started to crumble and pieces started to fall on the ground. Jack could see the man's face he had been fighting. Killer. Jack exclaimed. My dragon system. Chapter 94 Purple Liquid. Killer stood up from the ground. With his mask broken, there was no longer any need to continue wearing it. He ripped off the remainder of the mask and threw it to the ground. Jack started to laugh out loud. Looks like you hid your real strength this whole time. Jack said. Killer was currently ranked second in the academy while Jack was number one. Although their positions seemed close on the leaderboard, in reality to the academy, the two were very far apart in terms of power. In the few matches they had with each other, Jack would come out as the clear winner. But right now, Killer had shown Jack skills he had never seen before. Ray was currently injured quite badly. 
his fang boar armor had been completely destroyed by the blowback from the spear and his whole body was damaged. The mana Ray used would take a while to come regenerate so all he could do was use his normal amount of ki. He was currently facing five opponents at the same time while damaged and with no chest armor. The five Ray was currently facing weren't as strong as the leader. If Ray had to face all six of them at the same time it would have been a big struggle. Ray thought to himself it was lucky that Jack was here and keeping the leader busy. Although Jack originally came here looking for trouble. He was now helping Ray greatly. Ray would owe the man one in the future. Ray was currently demonstrating amazing footwork avoiding his opponent's strikes. Blending in with the shadows and then attacking them from behind. Ray was doing just enough to keep them all busy and not get hurt back. The Black Sash Knight skills truly came in handy at night time and at a time like this. What Ray needed more than anything right now was time. His mana would eventually return and in doing so would allow him to take out these small fries. Killer pulled out a small glass test tube. The glass tube had a purple liquid flowing inside of it. Killer took a quick glance at Jack before deciding to drink the purple liquid. Jack thought nothing of it and thought it was most likely a healing potion created by alchemy. There were many types of potions created using beast crystals and rare plants. Although none was as useful as mage's healing magic. Some of them had special effects such as not allowing the user to feel pain and giving the user confidence. Other than that, they didn't really do much. Jack went charging in towards Killer hoping to finish him off with one more strike. Despite his current engagement with the five red masked men, Ray had been taking quick glances from the corner of his eye to spectate the two battle. When he saw the purple liquid, he had a bad feeling. As soon as Killer took the purple liquid his aura changed. It got three times as strong and not only that. It went from yellow to a purple mix. It was the shadow plague. Wait. Ray shouted at Jack. Jack heard Ray shout from the other side of the arena. He was wondering what Ray was so worried about. Jack continued to charge in. He knew that Killer wasn't able to hurt his body so what did he have to worry about? As he got closer. He though his instincts were telling him to back away. At the last second. Jack decided to jump back. A swing from Killer's spear managed to scratch the surface of Jack's skin causing him to bleed. For the first time in a long time. Jack was shedding blood. Ray was struggling to think of what to do. The opponents right now were too strong for Noir to fight. And Jack might attack the beast thinking it was on the enemy's side. Ray had gained 5 mana points back in total. It wasn't enough to take out the 5 and killer but he needed to do something fast. Suddenly. Ray's mana points dropped down to 0. His gauntlet started to turn a slight ice blue chill color. Frost was starting to form on parts of the gloves. A red masked man swung his blade at Ray. Ray then grabbed the blade. Ice started to form surrounding the whole blade and then snap the blade broke in half. Ray punched the man in the stomach. Ray had currently used the rest of his mana points to infuse the ice attribute into his weapons. The situation between Killer and Jack was now reversed. Jack was doing his best to avoid each and every strike. Luckily for him, his weapon was very durable. Managing to block the spear. The attacks that Jack wasn't able to block started to leave cuts on his skin. Slowly Jack was starting to get worn down. Not so strong now are you Jack. Killer berated. Jack was enraged by the comment. He wasn't used to being on the defensive in a fight and it wasn't really working for him. He then chose to attack back. With each strike Jack threw it was returned with a stab by the spear. After 5 minutes of this. Jack had punctures all over his body. Blood was oozing out from him from all over. I'm amazed you can still stand. But this is the end. Killer gathered his key for one last strike aiming straight for Jack's head. The attack was too fast for Jack to move. When the blade was about to pierce his head. A hand reached out and grabbed the spear. How did you? Killer was shocked to see Ray come over here. Killer looked at his men to the side and could see they all had been beaten. While Jack was busy fighting. Ray managed to defeat the five men using the ice attribute. He knew he wouldn't have enough strength after but that didn't matter. Ray had the skill mana drain. He then went over to each of the five men on the ground and started to absorb their mana. Ray not only got his mana back. But he was able to nearly double his original mana pool. The spear started to freeze. Killer quickly pulled it back. Jack started to collapse and as he was just about to hit the floor. He landed on a soft furry body. Noir had been summoned and took Jack to the edge of the arena. Now it's my turn. My dragon system. 
Chapter 95 Life on the Line Jack was currently at the edge of the arena slumped down with his back up against the wall. He wasn't passed out but was badly hurt keeping an eye on Ray fighting killer. He had never been this hurt in his life before. He was wondering what on earth that purple liquid killer took was. That was the turning point of their battle. Right now though, there wasn't much he could do but hope Ray was strong enough to beat him. Although Ray had gotten some of his mana back, he was still struggling in the fight against Killer. He was still badly injured from before. Ray thought hard about it until he came to a conclusion. Ray figured out the trick to the spear. There was an advanced beast called the Spider Crab. The Spider Crab's shell was special. It had the ability to bounce back attacks of a certain level. Killer's spear was made from the advanced beast of the Spider Crab. Ray was struggling. He could attack but because of the weapon. But he wasn't able to put any key into his attacks. If he did, it would only recoil back onto himself like before. Killer's weapon was not only a higher tier than Ray's but also Killer was able to put his key into the spear. Although elemental attacks would work. Without key or mana they were basically useless. The only thing that was keeping Ray in the battle currently was his footwork from the Black Sash training and his hand-to-hand -hand combat skills learned from the old man. Ray's chest was currently exposed due to the damage he took. He no longer had the Fang Boar armor. The attacks were coming in fierce and fast like a snake but Ray would knock each one away. Jack was amazed. Not only was Ray strong physically but he was also skilled. Damn it if I had dealt with him early on it wouldn't have been a problem. It looks like his speed. His power. Everything has doubled. Ray thought to himself. Ray wished right now he had some of his dragon skills. With the fire and ice attribute at most. He could transfer it to what he was wearing. He wasn't able to cast a fireball or an ice ball. This way he could create a diversion. As a spear attack came down on Ray. He went to uppercut the spear as hard as he could without using any key. It was the only thing he could do. As the two weapons collided. Ray could hear a cracking sound in his gauntlets. Ray had more strength than the average human. Even without key. He would be able to match some students in terms of raw power but the main problem right now was his intermediate gauntlets weren't good enough to go up against an advanced tier weapon. When Ray was starting to run out of ideas, a voice sounded from behind. Here. Jack said as he barely stood up holding his great sword. Jack then threw the great sword in the air towards Ray. Ray leapt up and caught the weapon. You need a better weapon. Right. Well. You can borrow my baby girl for a little while. Jack had been watching Ray for a while now. When he saw Ray's gauntlets nearly break, he knew he needed to help out somehow. Jack was reluctant to give the weapon to Ray. There weren't many that could wield it for its huge size and weight. But if there was anyone who had a chance, it was Ray. Ray happily took the great sword from Jack and went on the attack against Killer. The sword was indeed heavy for Ray forcing him to use two hands to swing the thing. The two weapons clashed with thunderous roars. Sending out shockwaves throughout the arena. The weapon Jack had lent Ray was the same tier. The two of them were even in terms of power. Ray knew he needed to do something to turn the tide. Ray gripped the great sword in his right hand. It was going to take all of his power to hold it with one hand and use it properly. A spear strike came stabbing towards Ray's head. He moved to the side and grabbed the spear with his left hand. Ice a tribute. Ray used the remainder of his mana to freeze his hand with the spear. Ice started to not only cover the spear but Ray's entire left arm as well. The spear's special skill had activated recoiling the damage back to Ray. Mana 041. It was risky. If Killer had the strength to move the spear there was a chance Ray could lose his arm. With Ray's right arm he went to swing the great sword. His veins were bulging out of his arm as he gathered every ounce of strength he had. The great sword weighed a ton and it took all of his strength to swing with one arm. He had used all of his mana and key on the ice attribute. So. He had to finish Killer of with his pure strength. Killer was reluctant to let go of the spear but he knew if he didn't. He'd be a goner. As the great sword came closer to his head. He finally decided he had to let go and escape but when he tried to pull away. The ice had already started to reach Killer's hand. Causing him to be stuck to the spear. The great sword sliced right in between Killer's head and shoulders cutting his head off. Ray was sweating hard. His heart was beating fast. Too many times now he had been in a life or death situation. His hand was still stuck frozen to the spear. Ray walked over to Killer's body and placed his hand on Killer's chest. Mana drain. Error. 
The host is infected unable to use mana drain. Was it because of the shadow plague? Ray thought. After Killer had absorbed the purple liquid. His aura changed from yellow to a purple just like the Dark Guild members. Are Pureblood and the Dark Guild related to the Shadow Plague somehow? Then another notification sound came up. Task 41000 has been completed. You have unlocked the new skill, Transform. It seemed like to Ray whenever he got out of a life or death situation. He unlocked a new skill. Maybe the system was rewarding him for that. Ray thought back to all the situations so far, when he defeated the Black Wolf. When he fought the Dark Guild members. When he fought the Minotaur and now when he thought against the Pureblood member. But that couldn't be right because there was one instance where Ray didn't receive a skill. The first time he fought Pureblood with Gary against Lancey. If that was the case. That situation was just as tough as this one. Yet he didn't receive a skill at that time. Ray then quickly went to search for Killer to see if he had anything on him. Then Ray managed to find an extra vial of purple liquid in a small glass test tube. Ray held the test tube up with his right hand. So. This is what Killer drank. My Dragon System. Chapter 96 Skill Transform. Ray's left arm was still currently frozen solid. He needed to wait for his mana to come back to activate his fire attribute and melt the ice away. As it was. Ray's mana returned at a rate of 1 point for every 5 minutes that passed. If he sat down and focused. This rate could increase to 1 mana point per minute. Ray sat down and started to focus in order to get his mana points back. As he did. He went to look at the new skill he had obtained. Skill Transform. The skill Transform allowed Ray to change his appearance. Although Ray was originally happy when he first saw this. His opinion quickly changed when he read the description. Ray saw that the description had many restrictions. Ray would only be able to transform his appearance and not alter any of the features on his body. What this basically meant was he could change his face to appear as another person and skin color but nothing else. Not only that but the skill required him to maintain an output mana. Unlike his dragon eyes, while using the skill transform, it would use up 5 mana points per hour of transformation. Although this skill was pretty much useless for battle, Ray thought of other ways he could use this skill in the future. Ray then thought about the purple vial he had obtained. It seemed to contain the essence of the Shadow Plague. It not only infected Killer but also made him stronger. Ray was wondering if he would be able to give the vial to someone who knew what to do with it. He would have to wait until he was out of the Academy. There were more members of Pureblood than the Academy originally thought. And it was even worse now that perhaps it was all linked to the Shadow Plague somehow. If he gave it to someone in the academy it would probably disappear without Ray ever finding out what it was. Finally. Ray had restored enough mana points to activate the fire attribute into his right gauntlet. He then took it to his left arm and started to thaw out his arm until it was completely free to move again. After his arm was completely thawed out. Ray went to each of the bodies on the floor and started to burn them until there was nothing left but ashes. Ray was afraid that if he left the place and left the bodies there. Someone would find them and it would only cause him more problems. Ray didn't come out of the fight empty-handed though. He got to keep the spear that Killer used. It was an advanced tier weapon with the ability to reflect low magic spells and key. It was a shame that Ray didn't really fight with a spear. He thought about giving it to Dan but then the pureblood members would target Dan for having it. For now. He would just have to keep it somewhere safe for the time being. Ray then picked up the great sword and started walking over towards Jack. Jack was bloody all over and needed medical help soon. Here you go. Ray said as he handed the weapon back to Jack. Thank you for letting me borrow it. No problem. So you're a mage then. Jack said. Jack had seen Ray freeze the spear as well as burn the bodies. Jack was right to think that Ray was a mage. But he had never heard of a mage that could fight as well as Ray and also perform magic. It took mages years to learn how to use their magic properly. So they didn't have time to focus on fighting skills unless they were hundreds of years old. I hope I don't have to explain that it's important that you keep this a secret from everyone. Ray asked. Are you crazy? You saved my life. I owe you at least that. Jack had been brought up in a well-off noble family. But they weren't like others. His father had worked up from a foot soldier and eventually became a general for the Allier Kingdom while his mother was an ranked adventurer. The two of them brought up Jack well and taught him to always pay back those that you owe a favor to. And right now, 
Jack owed Ray his life. Jack thought if Ray ever needed him to risk his life for something he would do so without hesitation. Jack saw something special in Ray and thought that this man would soon change the world and he wanted to be a part of it. Jack then stuck his great sword down and tried his best to get down on one knee. I Jack Glee, owe my life to my savior. I promise if there's anything you ever need help with in the future, I will serve you at the risk of my own life. Ray liked people like Jack. They were honest and straightforward. Ray then summoned Noir and asked for both of them to get on her. You can also summon a beast. I was a fool to think I could beat you right now. Jack was happy to find out that there were still many strong people in this world. He had long grown bored of the academy. He felt like following Ray would get him in even more interesting scenarios allowing him to fight strong opponents like he did today. Ray dropped off Jack at the hospital so they could heal his wounds in time for the match tomorrow. Jack then remembered that Ray was also seriously injured by Killer. Aren't you going to come in too? Jack asked. Ray then showed his chest was originally there was a mark form the impact but right now there was nothing there. My body is special so don't worry about it. I'll be fine by tomorrow. After leaving Jack at the hospital, Ray started to walk towards his room. He was debating whether he should tell Wilfred of the events that occurred today. The problem was there were too many people Ray couldn't trust. Pureblood was an organization that just disagreed with the prophecy. But finding out the Shadow Plague is involved made everything a lot more serious. The Shadow had already infiltrated Avrian and they didn't even know it. It could only mean that the people at the top were responsible. Either a Master Knight or an Elder. My Dragon System. Chapter 97 New Equipment. Ray had decided to wake up earlier than usual today. The others had come back later than him and were out all night training. They needed good rest for the fights that they had in front of them. Meanwhile, Ray knew he had no opponent. Meaning there was nothing for him to worry about. Ray was originally meant to go up against Killer. Well with Killer now being a pile of ashes. That was impossible. Ray's injuries had healed up through the night but his equipment was still in poor condition. Ray decided to head down to the blacksmith to see if there was anything he could do. After entering the shop, this time to the owner was nicer than ever to Ray. As soon as Ray entered, the owner bowed down and greeted him. Something he had never done before. It frightened Ray to think what Slivia must have done to him. It also made him realize that her family must hold great power and sway throughout the kingdom to even have influence in the academy. Is there any way you can fix this? Ray took at a single right pictorial piece and a bunch of other shattered pieces and laid them out on the table. The owner rubbed his glasses to see if he was seeing things. Sir you must be joking. This thing is beyond repair. Although we did just get this new armadillo advanced chest piece if you would like a new one. The owner couldn't help but think what on earth Ray had done to get his equipment in a state like this. The fang bore piece wasn't weak. Even a cannon shot wouldn't have damaged it this badly. The owner grew even more suspicious of Ray. The owner shuffled over to the showcase against the right wall of the shop to take out the armadillo chest piece and let Ray examine it. The shelves holding armor on the side wall were currently encased in reinforced glass so no one would be able to steal the highly valued armors and if someone did manage to break the glass, steel bars would immediately drop down from the ceiling. The armadillo piece had a beautiful orange shine with kineshaped interlocking scales. It had been refined down to give it a sturdy strong defense. The piece looked nice and Ray was due for an upgrade on his equipment. As Ray got closer to the piece, he could see the price tag, 10,000 coins. Ray currently held 10 intermediate crystals so he would be able to trade for the Amur piece but a student couldn't get their hands on that much coin or that many crystals. The owner also knew Ray was a student of Avrian Academy and had already suspected him once of stealing basic tier crystals. If he was suddenly to pull out 10 the owner would have a heart attack. It's okay I could never afford that. Ray said. The owner smiled. He knew that the student in front of him had no way of paying for the equipment. The owner simply wanted to boast about the new piece of armor that had come in. Could you fix these for me then? Ray asked as he placed his two gauntlets on the table. The owner took a good look at them. Again wondering what Ray had been through to get the gauntlets in this type of condition. It will take me a while but I think I can work on it. The owner replied. Ray was happy. The gauntlets were a gift from the old man. He currently didn't have his own set and gauntlets were a rare item so the shop didn't sell any. He relied on the gauntlets a lot these days. 
since he mainly used martial arts to fight rather than his sword. Ideally, he would have loved for Killer to have dropped a sword instead of a spear. The spear was currently useless to him and was hidden under Ray's bed with a whole load of other things. Ray currently didn't have anywhere to put them so this was his only option. Ray could buy a spatial manipulation bag, but they costed a fortune. A tier 10 mage had to inscribe the bag with a specific advanced tier crystal. So not only were they expensive but also rare. Ray decided to go for a walk around the academy while waiting for his gauntlets to be repaired. While walking around, he saw one of the Red Sash Squires giving a tour of the academy to a crowd of people. The crowd was filled with parents, nobles, merchants and even adventurers. And further down the hall, we have the blacksmithing area. Inside the blacksmithing area, there is a shop where students are able to buy and sell equipment. It is also a space used by students of the blacksmithing club who wish to learn how to forge beast equipment. The Red Squire Knight said as he walked past. As the nobles walked past Ray, they couldn't help but start to whisper to themselves. Isn't that the red-haired boy who was in the tournament? Yes. I think you're right. How scary. Ray walked past the crowd of people and decided to ignore them. As he walked past, he noticed the adventurers carrying really nice equipment. The upside of being an adventurer was you often went out on quests to slay magical beasts giving you many opportunities to obtain strong crystal cores. Then a light bulb moment came to Ray's mind as he saw the adventurers walk past. Ray quickly rushed back to his room and went looking under his bed. Everyone else had already left the room in preparation for their upcoming match which was perfect for Ray. Underneath Ray's bed, he pulled a small chest and with the touch of his finger, the chest unlocked. The chest was inscribed with magic so only the user was allowed to open the chest. Of course, if you had greater key or magic than the spell inscribed, someone could break it. Ray opened the chest and took out the 10 intermediate beast crystals. He went over to the girl's side of the room where they had a long full body mirror. Skill transform activate. Suddenly, a white mist surrounded Ray's entire body. Then slowly the mist started to disappear. Out of the mist came a black-haired handsome man wearing all sorts of high-end beast gear. Although Ray currently looked impressive and looked like a strong adventurer. Everything was currently an illusion created from his skill. Transform. My Dragon System. Chapter 98 Handsome Man. The transformation skill currently took 5 mana points for every hour Ray was fully transformed. Ray currently had a total of 43 mana points. This meant at the moment, he could stay in his current form for around another 8 hours. This was, of course, as long as he didn't have to fight using this form as that would also take up additional mana. Ray looked at himself in the mirror one more time before heading off. Although he didn't really have any interest in humans. He thought he had a done a damn good job creating a handsome one using his skill transform. After leaving the room with his 10 crystals in hand, he decided to head back to the blacksmith shop. While walking through the halls, many of the female students couldn't help but look his way. Ray was right. He had created one of the most handsome men to walk the earth. The females and even male students couldn't help but stare in admiration. Not only that, the equipment he was wearing screamed high quality beast gear. But unknown to them it was all an illusion. Ray wasn't used to the friendly treatment. Students would greet him in the hallway and ask him if there was anything he needed. It was completely different from when he was Ray. This world is quick to judge. Just a simple change in appearance and their actions and speech towards me changed so drastically. Ray thought that the students were hypocritical. These very same students ignored him and shunned him just cause of his red hair. Finally, after arriving at the blacksmith shop, Ray opened the door and was happily greeted by the owner. So even you treat me differently. Ray mumbled. Sorry. What was that sir? Nothing. I'm looking for the best chest piece armor you have. As soon as the owner saw Ray walk in. His eyes lit up with gold. From the equipment alone that the adventurer was wearing. He knew this man was a big spender. The owner took Ray to the orange armadillo chest piece. Ray tried on the chest piece and straight away he could feel the quality in the armor. Not only was it strong, but it was flexible allowing him to have a free range of movement when fighting. I'll take it, Ray said, and how will you be paying for that sir? The blacksmith asked with a bit too much enthusiasm. Will this be okay? Ray said as he put 10 intermediate beast crystals out on the table. That's perfect. 
The owner quickly put the crystals away and was happy for Ray to walk out with the armadillo chest piece. Just as Ray was about to leave, he heard the bell chime on the door signaling that another person had entered the shop. In walked a beautiful silver-haired girl with her armor in a blue and white pattern. She carried a giant shield on her back. Slivia. Ray called out to her. Slivia looked at the man who had just called out her name. After looking at the man up and down for a good few seconds she realized she had no recollection of the man who called out to her. Not wanting to be rude Slivia walked up to the man and bowed down. Forgive me sir. But how do you know my name? Slivia was being extra polite. Her family had relations with many people who she had only seen when she was young. The man in front of her looked like an accomplished adventurer so she thought it would be best for her to mind her manners. Ray had realized the grave mistake that he had just committed and needed to think of something fast. It's is a pleasure to meet you. I'm here because of the Avrian tournament. Of course I would know one of the contestants participating in today's matches. Ray said as he nervously smiled. Slivia's instinct was telling her something was off. Slivia hadn't fought in the opening round meaning no one should know what she looked like. Slivia decided to play along for the time being as she remembered Sir Kay's warning. The person in front of her might be a member of Pureblood. I hope I can put on a good show for you. She said as she smiled and went over to the counter. Slivia was currently picking up a new single-handed sword. Ray took a look and could tell it was an upgrade from her last weapon. She was currently holding a shark fin tiger beast blade. It was a curved sharp blade with a blue finish on the back. It matched her outfit well. Slivia picked up the blade and started to walk back out the door. Is that an advanced tier weapon you are carrying? Ray asked. Slivia nodded. My brothers gifted me the crystal core for my battle today. Ray's feelings were currently conflicted. Slivia had helped him out in the past many times and right now he wanted to help her out but he didn't know how. The spear that Ray received from Killer was also an advanced tier weapon but even Killer wasn't able to put a scratch on Jack's body until he drunk the purple liquid increasing his key. Ray knew that Slivia didn't have a large amount of key. She always used her brain to fight her enemies but against an opponent like Jack that wasn't going to help her. It was the worst matchup for her. Your opponent Jack is strong. Ray said. His body will feel like it's almost impenetrable. Although your weapon is strong it won't be enough against Jack. You must find another way. This was all Ray could do to help out Slivia. Ray himself didn't know how he could be of help to her. All he could do was warn her and let her think of something. Slivia was surprised to find out that the person in front of her was speaking as if he had fought against Jack himself before but she thought what the man was currently saying had to be impossible. She currently had an advanced tier weapon. The only person out of all the second years to have won. It was hard for her to imagine anyone having a body strong enough body to withstand a striking from one. For some reason though, she felt like the man standing in front of her wasn't lying. What's your name? Slivia asked. Ray had thought about this for a while if he ever needed to use an alias. He missed his old name. The name is Nese. My Dragon System. Chapter 99 Mystery Hero. Slivia couldn't help but think that the name Nese sounded made up but who knew in today's day and age. Also, adventurers would often give themselves nicknames to sound more menacing. I know Nese. You said you were here to watch the tournament right? Well why don't we both go together? Slivia offered as she smiled. Sure. Why not? Ray replied. Ray was heading there now anyway. All he needed to do was find a time to split apart from Slivia and came back later. Slivia and Ray walked down the street to the arena together and while the two of them did, they talked about many things. Slivia asked what it was like being an adventurer. Although Ray had no clue, he easily made up stories of lands that he had seen when he was a dragon. The description he gave of places were realistic because he had actually seen them before. Suddenly, in front of the two of them, a commotion was happening. Many knights were running over to a certain direction and screams and shouts could be heard. Slivia looked concerned and said. Something must have happened. We still have time let's go check it out. Slivia and Ray quickly dashed over to the direction the knights were heading in. As they continued to follow the knights, the noise from the crowd grew louder. When they arrived finally, a crowd of people and knights had gathered around a building which had caught on fire. Slivia went to ask one of the people from the crowd what had happened. What's going on here? It's the inn. 
Apparently there was a shipment of crystals one of the merchants was carrying in a carriage nearby. All of a sudden, the carriage exploded and the inn caught on fire. Slivia and Ray rushed in through the crowd of people to get closer to the building. There were many knights covered in smoke and black charcoal who were either tending to or carrying the injured. Just then, a knight went up to the squad leader to report the situation. Sir, we've done the best we can for now. The crystals are acting like some sort of fuel. It's caused the fire to get out of hand. It's too strong for our men to enter. Are there any more people inside? A lady sir. She keeps saying she can't find her two children. Get a master knight here straight away. Ask around if there are any mages that can perform ice or water magic. Heck even a fire mage would do. Slivia and Ray had overheard the conversation between the knights. I have to do something. Slivia said as she bit her lip. You can't. If you go in like that your skin will burn off. But if I don't, they'll die. Slivia felt helpless. If only she could perform magic like her family members. She could do something right now. Ray scanned the building with his dragon eyes. He could see the children were in the top right corner of a room. The fire was slowly creeping up. It was clear that if something wasn't done soon the children would die. The situation brought up bad memories for Ray. When he was just a child someone had set his house on fire and tried to murder him and his parents. If it wasn't for his mother at the time, then they wouldn't have been able to control the fire. Ray started walking towards the building. What are you doing? You said yourself you'll die in there. Don't worry. I know a little bit of ice magic. Ray said as he dashed in past the crowd of people. Slivia was confused. To her, N.E.'s looked like your standard swordsman. Even the gear he was wearing said he was. Mages often wore normal clothes that increased their magical strength. Slivia couldn't help but think that N.E.'s was just putting on a brave act. The knights saw Ray try to approach the burning building and tried to stop him but Ray easily avoided them and quickly entered the house. Although Ray didn't have any magical spells, he did have his ice attribute. Right now, he was spreading his key around his body causing it to keep his body nice and cool. Ray had to act fast though, with the transformation and use of key his mana would go down faster. With Ray's dragon eyes he was able to locate the room the children were in fast. If it was anyone else, they would have had to search each and every room. But Ray knew exactly the right place to go. He finally found two kids who looked to be around the age of five and their energy was weak. Ray quickly grabbed the two kids and jumped out of a window nearby. Ray landed just outside the building with the two children in his hands. Steam was emitting from Ray's body as the fire and ice were constantly battling each other. A knight quickly came and took the two children out of Ray's hand. The crowd of people cheered as they saw the brave handsome warrior save the two children. Slivia was smiling brighter than ever. Just when Slivia was about to approach N.E.'s and see if he was okay. Suddenly N.E.'s ran away and disappeared from the crowd. The crowd couldn't help but talk about the mysterious stranger. He ran away. I guess he must have just been shy. Can you believe what he just did? Slivia just stood there thinking. Who was that guy, originally? She thought he might have been a member of Pureblood or the Dark Guild. But she found it hard to believe someone who would risk their life like that would join such evil organizations. Ray had currently run to the top of one of the buildings out of sight. 043. His mana had been completely depleted and his form had changed back to normal. That was a close one. As Ray started to meditate, a notification sound was heard. Task complete 51,000. New skill mana share obtained. As Ray read the notification and closed it, another one popped up. Task complete 61,000. New skill endless void obtained. Through this random chance of events, Ray happened to learn two new skills but that wasn't what Ray was really excited about. Finally, Ray thought he had found the answer to unlocking his dragon skills back. My Dragon System. Chapter 100 Unlocking Skills. Slivia was currently still stood outside the inn. It was burning more furiously than before and if the knights didn't do anything about it soon it would start to spread to the other buildings. Bring more water. A knight shouted. The knights had gathered plenty of water but it simply wasn't enough. They had managed to carry over large containers filled with gallons of water but had no machinery to dispense the water onto the inn. A master knight was strong enough to possibly lift the gallons of containers and jump up just high enough to pour it down but it would take a while longer before they reached the building. This is getting really out of hand. Slivia thought to herself. 
Just then the water out of all the containers started to lift into the air. The water started swirling around as if it was alive. Like a snake. De pants. A male's voice said. The water quickly flew to the inn and burst. Manging to subdue most of the fire. As Slivia turned around she saw four noblemen standing there with their hands out. Each of them had silver hair and wore blue and white clothing. Brothers. Slivia shouted. Slivia's four brothers continued to cast magic spells eventually dispelling all the fire. The crowd cheered at the sight of the mages and were impressed at what they had seen. The knights quickly came over to thank them for their help. Once that was all done with the tallest and eldest of the brothers Matthew walked over to Slivia. It's been a long time little sister. Matthew said as he rubbed her head. Ray was currently sitting down on a roof of a building not far from the arena. He still had a couple of hours before the event started. So there was no rush. Although he didn't know who was fighting first. Everyone was required to come to the arena at the same time. Ray looked at the two skills he had just obtained. The first skill was called Mana Share. It was a skill that was the complete opposite of Mana Steel. While Mana Steel stole the key and Mana from creatures and people. Mana Share gave it to them. As a Dragon Sen would often use this skill on his weaker friends or creatures that were dying. The thing was his mana back then was nearly unlimited while right now. Ray didn't have much. Ray thought this skill would be useful. If he wanted to change the human race and fight the Shadow Plague. Then he needed an army and not the current one that was under control of the Alyr Kingdom. The kingdom was already a mess without them realizing it. There was no way to tell who wouldn't betray them and who wouldn't. The Dark Guild and Pureblood members were already deeply rooted at the top. What Ray needed was dedicated followers. An army of his own. This skill would prove incredibly useful in the future when needing powerful allies. The second skill he had obtained was Endless Void. Just when Ray was struggling to think of where to put his items. The perfect skill came right in front of him. It was as if the system was watching him from above. Endless Void was a separate space that only Ray had access to. Just like the name stated. It was endless. This meant he would be able to store anything he wanted in this space and pull it out when he wanted to. Ray realized that there was a problem with using his second identity and ease. A lot of the public had seen him wearing the armor he had just bought. Which meant while Ray was in the academy. He wouldn't be able to wear the armor. Ray thought the best thing to do would be to get two sets of equipment. One set for NEs where he could be the rich great powerful adventurer who didn't need to hold back or hide his abilities and one set for the student Ray. Who was one of the best knights at Avrian Academy. After obtaining these two skills though. Ray thought back to the connections between all these events. What made the system say, task complete. All of them had one thing in common. Ray had saved a human life. Ray. Of course. Wasn't sure about this theory but it was the only thing that made sense so far. The current two skills he had obtained had nothing to do with fighting magical beasts. But there were a few things that were troubling him. The first time he had unlocked a skill. He saved Gary and Amy in the forest. If he had saved two people back then why didn't he receive two skills? There was also the time he had defeated the Minotaur. He had protected Gary. Monk and Jasmine yet only received one skill. Ray looked back at all the events that led him to learn skills and when he shouldn't have. Gary with the Black Wolf. The Old Man with the Dark Guild. Jasmine and the others with the Minotaur. Jack with the Pureblood members and the two kids from the fire. If the system truly gave him a skill every time. He saved a life then he should have got one for Amy with the Wolf. Gary when he fought against Monk. Two more skills against the Minotaur and when he fought against Pureblood with Gary. Then it hit him. Perhaps the system only granted a skill for every life you had saved and didn't count it if it was multiple times. Gary had already been saved when he was younger. So he no longer got any skills from it. With the other incidents that weren't related to Gary. Ray had a theory about those two. While fighting the Minotaur Monk was the least injured out of all of them. Maybe Monk's life wasn't saved that day but only Jasmine's. Of course. Right now these were all theories running through his head. Ray wanted to test this theory as soon as possible. If it was true. Finally he would be closer to getting his powers back. The problem was it wasn't like someone was in a near-death situation every day that Ray could stop. He would just have to wait until the next opportunity to come up. To see if it was true. My Dragon System. Chapter 101 Protective. Ray had finally reached the arena. 
he was no longer disguised as N.E.'s. He put the armadillo chest piece away in his endless void. Even if no one had seen him wear it. There would be many people wondering how a student such as Ray was able to afford and get one in the first place. When he had the time to head back to the dorm, he would also put the spear in there too. The students going through to the next round were told to go to two separate waiting rooms before the event started. One contained all the second year students and the other all the third year students. When Ray entered the room, he was surprised to see that not only were all his roommates here but also many parents and relatives. Gary. Ian and Kyle sat down in the corner of the room alone. While the rest of the group were with their relatives. Ian and Kyle were orphans who had been abandoned as kids so they had no parents. While Gary came from a small poor village. Although Gary would be able to pay for his parents' travel cost. He didn't see the need for them to bother with something so small. Nevertheless, Gary's heart was hurting. Seeing the others talking to parents and siblings made him miss Amy even more. If Amy hadn't passed away then the only person Gary would have bothered to invite would have been her. Gary was overcome with a new determination. He needed to win now more than ever. Slivia was currently talking with her four brothers. She hadn't seen them in two years after all. She had a good relationship with each of them. They all cared for her as she was their only little sister they had. In total, Slivia had four brothers. Matthew was the oldest and was currently a general in the Allier Kingdom army. John and Jake were a little bit younger than Matthew. But they too worked for the army and their ranks weren't fair behind Matthew. Also being captains of their own squads. The youngest of the four was Max. He was currently in his third year at Roland Academy. Mages needed to learn a lot more than knights. So while knights had to stay at the academy for three years then do two years service in the army. Mages had to study for five years. But once they finished, they were free to do what they wanted. Slivia was currently talking about everything she had done at the academy. Her brothers noticed straight away that Slivia would bring up a certain person's name up more than once. And when she talked about this boy, her tone would slightly change. Just then, Slivia noticed Ray entering the room. Their eyes met and Slivia gleefully waved at Ray. Ray smiled and waved back. Is that this Ray boy you've been talking about this whole time? What are you giving me that look for? He's just a good friend. Then when Slivia went back to look at her brothers, she could only count three of them. Huh. Where did Max go? When she turned around, she could see that Max had his arm around Ray's neck. Slivia said a lot of things about you. Come over let's have a chat. Max said as he dragged Ray by the neck to the rest of the group. Max had brought Ray over and Slivia was starting to get butterflies in her stomach. She knew Ray wasn't good at speaking with people. But her family was the opposite. They loved to talk. She was hoping the two of them wouldn't clash somehow. Matthew was giving Ray a cold stare as Max brought him over. Ah yes. Now I recognize you. You were the boy who went on a rampage in the opening round. Slivia quickly interrupted them before either of them could continue. That's because Ray had a lot on his mind at the moment. Matthew then put out his hand to shake Ray's. Ray looked at it for a while and then accepted the handshake. I will trust you to look after my sister. Slivia's face started to turn bright red. What does that mean? I can look after myself. Slivia replied. Slivia is a good leader. Ray said. The four brothers were stunned by the first words that had come out of Ray's mouth and started to laugh. Ray could tell when shaking hands with Matthew that he was strong. Ray was actually very tempted to use Mana Steel. It was the first time he had been this close to a mage and a powerful one at that. He couldn't begin to imagine how much mana the person in front of him had. Well Ray, you better win your fight today. Max said. Then we can see each other again in the All Kingdom tournament. I'll be part of the Roland Academy team. Ray's ears perked up slightly. One of Slivia's brothers went to Roland Academy. Sorry did you say you went to Roland? Did you happen to know a female student that passed away recently by the name of Amy? I'm sorry. Roland is a big school. I'm not sure I have. Max replied. Although Max was trying his best to act normal and put on a brave face. Ray could tell that his attitude and feelings had changed once he had asked the question. Max was clearly hiding something. Why don't you two start getting ready for the tournament? Matthew recommended. It will be starting any moment now. With introductions over, Slivia and Ray walked off to sit next to Gary and the others who were on their own. Matthew turned and looked over at Max. What are you hiding Max? 
You need to tell me everything about this Amy girl he asked for. Yes. Brother. Max replied. Then Jake approached by Matthew's side and whispered. What do you think of him? The boy's eyes were fierce. He wasn't scared of us at all. In fact, he was almost looking at us like we were some sort of food. The boy is strong but dangerous as well. Should we get rid of him? No. Leave him for now and let's just see what happens. My Dragon System. Chapter 102 Sharing Power. It was almost time for the first match of the third year students against the second year students. Everyone said goodbye to their family members and friends and soon. Only the contestants were left in the room. Everyone made sure their gear and equipment were put on properly before waiting for the call to head out. Ray noticed that Slivia was slightly shaking. It was a strange sight for Ray and the others to see. Usually. Slivia was always calm and composed especially when leading the group. Ray decided to sit down next to Slivia. As Ray took a seat. Sylvia looked up at Ray and tried her best to force a smile. I'm a mess right? Now aren't I? Slivia admitted. It's just. This match means so much for me. My brothers. You met earlier. They have all done amazing things. When my parents found out I couldn't perform magic. All their expectations of me kind of disappeared. Every day I would see my brothers get praised while I remained invisible in the background. This is finally my chance to prove to them I'm not useless. There was a slight silence between the two of them before Ray decided to reply. Did they even bother to show up? Ray inquired. I saw your brothers here but not your mother and father. Stop thinking about people who aren't even here and start thinking about the people around you. If you start ignoring the people who are around you and chase the people who aren't. That's how you end up with no one. Tears started to flow out of Slivia eyes. Her whole life she had been trying to impress her parents and finally she had the opportunity. Truthfully. She was upset that they didn't arrive yet she still wanted their acceptance. At home. She never felt like she had a family as her brothers were always away and her mother and father were too busy. When she arrived at the academy and formed her team and friends. She started treating them as a family. That's why she always tried so hard to stop arguments from happening and tried to help fix things she wasn't even a part of. She understood what Ray was saying. As Slivia was thinking about what to do she suddenly felt a hand on her back. But it wasn't just one hand. When she turned around. She could see that everyone was there looking out for her. Monk. Martha. Dan. Ian. Gary. Kyle and even the two twins Badger and Sloth. Slivia wiped away her tears and looked Ray in the eyes. The others could see that Ray and Slivia would be best left alone and decided to get ready somewhere else. I want to win Ray. And not for my family. I want us all to go to the All Kingdom tournament together. Ray liked Slivia a lot. She never discriminated against him and saw him just like everyone else. Ray wanted her to be part of his team in the future but right now her loyalty was still with her family. Everything she had done so far was for her family. If she continued down the path of pleasing her parents. Ray could see this causing serious problems. However. Ray could see though that she was slowly changing. Slivia's hand was still shaking a little. I met a man today. He told me that Jack was strong. Too strong. Originally. I was confident but for some reason those words the man said kept repeating in my head. What if he's right Ray? What if he is too strong for me? Ray realized that the man she was talking about was himself when he was disguised as N.E.'s. At the time. Ray thought there was nothing he could do. So he told her to the truth in hopes that Slivia would find a way to overcome Jack's inherent strength. Sadly. It looked like she hadn't and was looking to him for answers. Slivia. Do you really want to win? Slivia nodded in response. I'm a man who expects their favor to be returned to them. If I help you now you must help me in the future. Although Ray sounded a bit selfish. He needed to make it abundantly clear that Slivia would owe him for this. Ray even if you didn't help me out now. I would always help you out. Good answer. Now I can help you but what I'm about to do is only temporary and you need to come back to me again afterwards okay. And I don't think I have to say this but not a soul must know of what I'm about to do. Slivia nodded again. Ray then stood up and went behind Slivia placing his hand on her back. Skill mana share. One mana. One mana. As the energy flowed from Ray into Slivia. She could feel all her cells start to bounce around. Her skin felt like it was on fire. A burning sensation grew throughout her body. It wasn't a bad pain though. It was almost as if she was being reborn. 
Mana pool 23. Ray had passed over 20 points of mana to Slivia. With this on top of her key power. He thought it should be enough to even the playing field against Jack. Slivia could feel the energy inside her almost triple in power. She couldn't believe it. Then her mind went back to the first round of the tournament. She had seen Ray take the key from the contestants on the ground. If Ray was able to take key. Then did this mean he was able to give key to others as well? It was hard for Slivia to believe though. No mage was capable of skill like this. It was unheard of. But she could clearly feel all the key in her body. Your body isn't used to that amount of key. I would say while fighting your body has a maximum of 10 minutes. Don't go over that time otherwise. You'll just end up damaging your body. Ray's body was special allowing him to control a crazy amount of key without damaging his body. Slivia was talented and if Ray gave her a little bit of key over time, then her body would be able to adapt to the amount but right now if she stood any chance of beating Jack. Ray knew he had to at least give Slivia this much. This is an announcement. Would all contestants please make their way to the arena? It was time for the second stage of the tournament to begin. My Dragon System. Chapter 103 Slivia vs Jack. The 10 second year students walked into the arena while the 10 third year students walked in from the other side. As the two teams entered, they were greeted with gigantic cheers that shook the whole stadium. Slivia scanned the crowd for her brothers while Gary's eyes were focused on one person, Harry, who was stood on the opposite end of the arena. Will everyone please look to the display in the middle of the arena? The holographic display started to randomize images of all the contestants until it finally stopped. And it looks like the first battle of this evening will be between the lovely gorgeous Slivia Hart versus the impenetrable Jack Dem. Slivia and Jack approached the center of the stage while the rest of the students watched with eager anticipation from the outside. The rules were a bit different for the second round compared to the first round. Contestants were allowed to use real equipment for this fight. There were no longer any bracelets on either contestant. Instead, two master knights were on standby. Sir Kay and Wilfred. If a contestant was to take a fatal blow, Wilfred and Sir Kay would do everything in their power to stop the fight just before the blow would hit and declare one person the winner. If it was also apparent that one person was overwhelmingly stronger than the other. At any time the master knights had the power to stop the contestants and declare the other person the winner. If a contestant is knocked out or forfeited, this too would count as a win. Slivia gripped her shield and sword tightly in her hand while Jack walked slowly with his giant great sword on his back. Jack was shirtless and wore no armor. The second year students got nervous in the sight of Jack wielding such a huge weapon. Do you think she can win? Monk asked. Of course. She can monk, Martha replied. You know how strong she is. Although Ray had another thought going on in his head. Even though he shared his mana with Slivia. He was hoping that Jack was still injured from the events of last night. But Jack looked like he had completely recovered. There wasn't a mark on him. It looked like Ray wasn't the only one with a special body. The center of the arena was slightly elevated compared to the rest of the arena this time. Jack and Slivia stood up into the center. When they both got on, Slivia was staring intently at Jack. Yet Jack was looking straight past her and directly at Ray. Then a horrible thought came across Ray's mind. Boss, do you want me to forfeit this match? Jack shouted from across the arena while looking at Ray. Ray's horrible thought was right. Jack was a headstrong loyal idiot. Ray decided to ignore Jack's words hoping he would get the message and looked away. Boss can you hear me? Boss. Boss. Air Ray. I think he's talking to you. Monk indicated. Of course not. He's clearly looking for this boss person. Ray. Ray. Jack then continued to shout. Everyone was stunned. Why was the number one student? A third year. Calling a second year student boss. The rest of Ray's teammates didn't even know how to react. Ray finally shook his head to which Jack nodded. Okay. I won't hold back. Jack said as he pulled out his giant greatsword. I thought you might have been the boss's girlfriend or something. I'm not his girlfriend. Slivia snapped back with a red face. We're just really good friends. Although Slivia was shocked by everything going on. The surprise made her feel calmer. She was no longer shaking with nerves. And the first match of the day will start in 3. 2. 1. The Warhorn played signaling the start of the first round. Slivia started cautiously. Her mind was clear and she needed to see Jack's skill level. She allowed Jack to attack first and that's what he did. With no hesitation. 
Jack swung his greatsword down at Slivia. Slivia rolled out of the way causing the sword to smash and form a crater in the ground. That attack was so powerful. Dan shouted. Her shield will be useless against that thing. Although the others didn't want to say it. They thought the same thing. Slivia allowed Jack to continue to attack widely and Slivia dodged each one of them. It looked like Jack was playing whack-a-mole. Slivia noticed that Jack attacked so widely he left many openings to attack back. Originally. She thought that Jack was perhaps setting up a trap wanting her to attack there. After all. She was facing the number one student in the academy. But after a while. She realized that Jack was just being reckless. This time when Jack came in for a swing. Slivia moved out of the way and attacked back. But as her sword touched Jack's body. Her blade bounced back as if she was hitting a solid wall. Slivia was currently using the same amount of key she always had. She didn't want to use the gift that Ray had given her just yet and she also didn't believe someone's body would be hard enough to withstand an attack from an advanced tier weapon. Didn't Slivia just get an advanced tier weapon? Martha asked. Yeah. She's using it now. Ian replied. This spectacle made Gary think he was incredibly lucky to get an opponent like Harry. With Gary's intermediate dual blades, he could never hope to put a scratch on Jack's body. Although he felt bad for Slivia, he needed to win his fight more than anything so he could go through to the All Kingdom tournament. After Slivia's sword bounced back off Jack's body, Jack wasted no time in attacking, swinging his giant sword at her. Slivia managed to bring her shield in front of her just in time. The sword came down and smashed down on the shield sending a loud ring through the stadium. Slivia was being pushed down from the strength and weight of the sword and her shield was slowly breaking apart. She had no choice now. She focused the extra key around her body and pushed with all her strength. The shield pushed the sword away and as it did, pieces of the shield went flying everywhere. You're stronger than you look. Jack said. Now it's getting interesting. Ten minutes. That's all I have. Slivia thought as she threw the rest of her broken shield away and charged in at Jack. My dragon system. Chapter 104 time is up. With Slivia's shield now broken. She could only rely on her speed and the additional key. With fierce determination. She infused her legs with key and kicked it up a notch. With speeds much faster than she was used to. Slivia dashed towards Jack. Jack responded with a horizontal slash towards her neck. She ducked and slashed across Jack's body vertically with all the strength she could muster. She jumped backwards to avoid any counterattack. Jack started to feel a strange itching sensation on his chest. He looked down and noticed a long red scratch mark across his body. No blood had been drawn but for the first time ever. People witnessed Jack receiving an injury. Harry. Are you watching this? Cherry eyes looked like they were about to pop out of her skull from what she had just seen. I didn't think there was anyone in the school who would be able to hurt Jack. If anyone had a chance. I would have thought it had been Ray. It looks like we might have underestimated the second years. On the other side. The second years were having the complete opposite reaction. Slivia did all that and she just caused a scratch. Dan shouted. His body must be made of steel. Slivia looked at Jack and bit her lip. Even with the use of extra key she still wasn't able to hurt Jack enough to even draw blood. Slivia had no time to rest. She knew she was under a time limit. She came in attacking Jack whenever she could. Avoiding big swings and going in at just the right time to attack. The audience was at the edge of their seat. They could tell that one big swing from Jack's giant sword would end the match at any moment. Dodge. Strike. Dodge. Strike. Dodge. Strike. This pattern repeated itself but still. There was no luck. Jack's body was just slightly red from Slivia's successful hits. Stronger. Faster. Slivia thought in her head with each strike. Was Slivia always this strong? Monk asked. The rest of the team had seen things they never thought Slivia could do. Her speed looked better and she looked stronger. Even though Slivia had the help of Ray's key. It meant nothing if the person wielding it wasn't skillful enough to use it. Time's up. Ray whispered to himself. Slivia went in for one more strike and as she did. Suddenly. Shooting pain started to ring through her body. It felt like someone was tearing her muscles from inside out. Just a little more. She said. Jack saw Slivia had slowed down greatly. He went for another swing and thought this was the end. Clash. A big cloud of dust was swept up as the giant great sword made impact. When the dust finally settled. 
Wilfred's hand was holding the giant great sword in place while Sir Kay was carrying Slivia over his shoulder. And we have a winner. Jack Dem. Damn it. How was she ever meant to win against a monster like that? Dan complained. She did well. Ray said. There wasn't a doubt in anyone's mind that Slivia had tried her best and if they were put in the same situation as her. They would have only been able to perform half as well. Sir Kay quickly took Slivia to the medical bay. Wilfred offered Jack the opportunity to go but Jack insisted there was no need. As Jack started walking back to his teammates, he noticed his chest was starting to sting a little. When he looked down again, he saw a faint trace of blood leaking out of the red scratches. You have strong friends Ray. Jack thought as he smiled and continued to walk back to his teammates. The next match was Badger vs Violet. Badger looked nervous as he started to walk onto the stage. He wasn't his usual self and his twin brother Sloth was the same. What is he so worried about? He did really well in the opening round. Gary said. Sloth looked at Badger walking into the ring. The thing is, the two of us have never really been apart from each other. We do everything together. Even use the same toothbrush. That's kinda disgusting man. Dan shuddered at the thought of using someone else's toothbrush. The fight started and the others quickly realized what Sloth was talking about. All the acrobatic moves that they saw Sloth and Badger do in the first round. Relied on them using each other. In the ring right now. He was a sitting duck waiting to be fried. The match quickly ended with Badger losing and the next person to be displayed on the screen was Sloth. The team was feeling hopeful until they saw Sloth display the same skills as Badger. Sloth lost the match quickly meaning currently the Secondier team had three losses in total. The display started again going through all the contestants randomly until it landed on Ray and Killer. Ray walked up to the center of the stage and waited. If the third year student Killer does not arrive in one minute he will automatically be disqualified from the tournament. A minute passed and as Ray had suspected no one showed up. Ray was declared the automatic winner. The crowd erupted in boos disappointed in not being able to see a match from Ray. Who did the best in the first round? It's a shame we won't get to see the boy fight again. Matthew said looking from the arena. The boos quickly stopped as the next match was announced. On the screen was Kyle and his opponent Nay. Nay was ranked 5th in the overall 3rd year rankings. She was a strong beautiful fighter who had the body of a model. Her main choice of weapon was a whip. The two contestants walked on stage and the audience thought the match looked interesting. Kyle was using a chain with a weight on the end while Nay was using a whip. Both weapons were unique and everyone was interested in how the two of them would fight. My Dragon System. Chapter 105 That's my job. The atmosphere of the remaining contestants was anxious and nervous. Yet Kyle seemed to be excited when his match was announced. He happily rushed forward towards the stage. Do you know what's up with the guy? Martha asked. Monk was just shaking his head staring down at the ground. He was ashamed to know someone like Kyle. Kyle always gets like this when he sees a pretty girl. As Kyle stepped onto the stage, he started to shower Nay with compliments. That dress and whip is the perfect combination to your slender moving body. My chain and your whip could be the perfect couple item. But Nay had heard it all before. She had been asked out by many of the third years but turned them all down. If you truly wish to impress me, then prove that you are stronger than me. Nay wanted a strong man but out of the third year students. None had met her criteria so far. Jack was the strongest student by far but his idiocy was a big turn off for her. Killer who was ranked second was always silent and never to be seen. Sid left him out of the equation. And being ranked fifth out of all the third years, the rest above her were female. As the fight was about to start, Ray started to walk away. Aren't you going to stay and watch the fight? Martha asked. There's no need. I already know who is going to win. Ray continued to walk off and started to make his way to the medical bay. The others thought Ray was being a bit harsh. Even if their teammate was going to lose, the least he could do was stay and support him. Ray had finally reached the medical bay and saw Slivia lying down on the ground. She had already been treated by the doctors and there wasn't much they could do apart from suggesting that Slivia get some good rest. Ray approached Slivia and sat down next to her. Slivia immediately covered her face with her arm as soon as she saw Ray. But that still didn't stop Ray from seeing the tears roll down her face. I'm sorry Ray. Even after you helped me, Slivia said as she cried. Ray wasn't good in situations like this. 
he had decided to come to see Slivia so he could take his mana back but now was clearly not a good time. Ray. Will I ever get stronger? Slivia. You were amazing. No one watching would have said differently. You just happened to go up against a monster. But that's not an excuse. What would happen if we were to meet a strong magical beast out in the wild? It's fine saying that now. But what would I do if I couldn't protect everyone? Ray knew what it was like to want to protect everyone around him and fail. He did with his entire race. He was more powerful than his fellow dragons and he had wanted to protect them. But he failed. You can never protect everyone Slivia and it's not your job too. No matter how strong you are or how strong you get. But I want to at least be able to protect you and. Our whole group. Slivia blurted out. As a whole bunch of tears came out with it. Ray felt disheartened. Slivia was a lot stronger person than he ever was. She didn't have a fraction of the strength he did yet she still wanted to protect everyone. This whole time Ray had been afraid. He had distanced himself from everyone in the hopes that they didn't need protecting. He was scared that if he tried protecting them, he would fail again. But even now that he was human, the people he cared about around him were getting hurt and dragged into things. Ray then held Slivia's hand and started the mana drain process. Slivia could feel the energy slowly start to come out from her body and when Ray was finally done, he stood up and started to walk away. You don't need to protect everyone Slivia. That's my job. When Ray finally arrived back up on the arena, the second year students were silenced while the whole crowd was cheering. Did Kyle win yet? Ray asked. Just as Ray said that, Kyle currently had Nay tied up with his chain. Nay was struggling to break free but no matter how hard she tried it was useless. I give up. She said as she realized she wasn't able to get free. And we have our first second year winner. As the announcer said that, Kyle released his chain from Nay's body and gave her a thumbs up. Remember to keep your promise. You owe me a date. Nay turned around and quickly left the arena. I can't believe what I just saw. Dan said. Wasn't Kyle always goofing around or running away from beasts when we went out hunting? How on earth did he win that match so easily? Ray could sense that for the first time Kyle was serious. During training, Ray had seen instances of Kyle's ability but the boy seemed to never focus. He was a quick learner when he wanted to be but was always distracted by gossip or girls. During the fight, Kyle managed to avoid each and every whip strike of Nay that moved lightning fast. And when Kyle attacked himself, his attacks with the chain were just as fast back. With the use of the black sash footwork and his new chain weapon, he was easily able to outmaneuver Nay and tie her up. Kyle had also managed to distribute an even amount of key to each chain lock, making it nearly unbreakable. This was something that required a massive amount of concentration to do. But Kyle managed it because he was determined more than ever to show Nay his true strength. The huge holographic display started to randomize through contestants once more, till it finally stopped again. You don't want to miss this fight folks because for the next fight we have the number one ranked student Gary. And his opponent Harry. Both of these students are known for their beautiful swordsmanship and there's no telling who going to win. Finally. Gary said. My dragon system. Chapter 106 best swordsman. Gary walked up to the stage more focused than ever. Unlike the others who wanted to prove their strength to someone. Gary was different. He needed to win this match so he could further progress to the All Kingdom tournament. That way he would get to meet some of the top officials at Roland Academy. Gary hadn't planned what he would do once he met them but that didn't matter to him right now. He could think about that later. Do you think Gary can win Ray? Monk asked. Honestly I don't know. Ray wasn't lying when he gave that response. He had fought against Harry when he was only a first year and had completely lost. At the time, Harry had said he was only ranked 50th out of all the third years but clearly, he had been hiding his strength. Now when Ray thought back to the event, Harry probably only showed him his rank to encourage Ray to train even harder. On the other hand, there were times where Ray thought the opponent was far too strong for Gary. Like the time they faced the pureblood members in the forest but somehow, he came out as the victor. As Gary stood on the arena stage, he closed his eyes as if he was listening out for something. Gary, you, must, win, for, me, a soft gentle voice was heard in his mind. Gary held his two dark purple dual blades tightly and was ready. As Harry left the third years to go up on stage, Jack said something just as he started to walk off. 
Don't underestimate these second years. They're strong. Harry continued walking and said. I know. Harry was also currently using two blades which were silver in color. Both contestants stood around 15 meters apart from each other. The match will start in 3, 2, 1. The war horn sounded and both of them dashed in at the same time. Meeting in the middle. Gary started off aggressive attacking as fast and as hard as he could but Harry stayed calm deflecting each and every strike. Come on. Why can't I see them? Gary thought as he continued to attack. Gary had been training this whole time to see the white lines appear at will. During practice. Not once had Gary been able to make the white lines appear. Gary was hoping if he was put in a tough spot again. He might find the answer. Gary continued attacking hoping that the white lines would start to appear in his vision but as he was attacking something strange started to happen. This whole time so far it felt like Harry was deflecting his attacks but now it felt like Gary's attacks were being pulled in. Gary tried to attack in a different direction but it felt like his sword moved to where Harry wanted him to be. It wasn't just in Gary's head. Harry was no longer deflecting Gary's sword but now matching his sword to Gary's and moving it in the direction he wanted. Slowly as the match went on. Harry had figured the correct amount of strength and force to use to control Gary's blade. Then when Harry had complete control. He pulled both of Gary's swords to the ground with his and kicked Gary in the chest. Is this all you have? I thought you were meant to be the strongest of the first years. If you ask me. That girl was a lot stronger than you. Gary gritted his teeth and stood up again. Without hesitation. Gary continued to charge forward but Harry would just repeat the same thing over and over again while making sure not to hit Gary with his sword but instead either kick or punch Gary. After 15 minutes of punches and kicks. Gary's face was swollen all over and his body was badly hurt. Although at first. The audience thought Harry was being too nice. They now all thought differently. Harry was torturing Gary. We must stop the match. One of the elders said. We are knights. Not barbarians. No. Can't you see? The boy's eyes, they're not done yet. Gary was determined to win this. What was a little pain to him? The pain that Gary felt was only reminding him that he was alive while his sister was dead. He would have gone through any amount of pain to get his sister back. Gary suddenly started to feel a strange feeling through his body. His cells were vibrating madly and his mind felt clearer than ever. This time Gary started to walk slowly over towards Harry. Every other time he had charged right in. Harry couldn't help but feel that something was different about Gary this time. As Gary got closer and closer to Harry. Harry could feel the pressure emitting from his body. This is more like it. Harry thought. Harry didn't realize it himself but his body was sweating and his heart was beating. Every cell in his body was currently telling him to get away from this person but Harry's mind wouldn't listen. Harry lifted up his two swords ready to deflect whatever attack Gary was ready to give him. When Gary was only a few short steps away from Harry he mumbled something to himself. Finally. I can see them. Gary then dashed in and struck with his sword. Harry was ready to deflect it as usual but this time something different happened. As his sword was ready to collide with Gary's. It looked like at the last second it moved like a snake and went around his sword. Harry managed to block the strike with his other sword just in time but as he looked up another strike was coming right at his head and he no longer had any hands free to block it. Clang. Just before the sword reached Harry's head. A black obsidian blade stopped the strike. You have won. That's enough now. Sir Kay said. As soon as Gary had heard those words his body collapsed to the ground. Ladies and gentlemen your winner Gary. Applause didn't start straight away as the audience was confused by what had just happened. From just looking at the two opponents it was strange to say that the winner was on the floor while the loser didn't have a mark on him. But in the end. If a master knight intervened in the fight. Then it was up to them to declare a winner and Sir Kay did just that declaring Gary the winner. Everyone watching from the side was proud of Gary. Gary had his ups and downs. But everyone understood why. But one thing never changed. Gary was the strongest swordsman they all knew. The announcer went off ready for the next match. Now let's get ready for the next round. Who is it going to be? My Dragon System. Chapter 107 Quitting. The screen continued to randomize until it eventually stopped. The next two contestants shown on the screen were Dan and Arthur. Dan went up to the stage with his spear in hand and so did Arthur with his longsword. Dan was ready after watching everyone fight. 
he had come to the academy in hopes to spread his name and his families in the future. His family were in charge of the spear division in Alyar Kingdom Army but there weren't many spear users in the first place. His father had given him the task to convince people that the spear was still powerful and would hope by showing them how powerful the spear was. Many people would choose to join the spear division. This was Dan chance to prove it with everyone watching. But then something unexpected happened. As soon as Arthur reached the stage and the war horn sounded. Arthur raised his hand. I forfeit from the competition. Arthur said. No. Dan screamed in response. Dan was currently in a battle mode mindset and he had been itching to fight. But now that his opponent had given up. There was no chance for him to show his skill. Due to Arthur forfeiting the competition Dan has automatically been declared the winner. The crowd began to mumble to each other. They weren't sure what reason Arthur had for quitting the competition after already making it this far. It didn't make any sense unless he was scared of his opponent and thought he was already going to lose. But contestants were allowed to quit whenever they felt like it and didn't need to give an explanation. The screen quickly went on to display the next fight. In hopes that the crowd didn't get too disappointed. The next match had been decided and it would be Martha against Cherry. As Martha went to walk onto the stage Monk called out to her. Martha please don't get hurt too bad. Martha turned around and scuffed Monk's hair up like a little dog. Don't worry about it. The Master Knights will stop anything if it is too dangerous remember. Monk's face turned red as he was embarrassed that he was being treated like a puppy. Martha then quickly walked off and went to go on stage. You know if I didn't know any better. I think you like her Monk. Kyle said with a cheeky smile. What just because I told her not to get hurt. Monk snapped back. Now that I think about it why didn't I see it before? Dan said out loud. Of course. It was so obvious. Shut up. Monk shouted back. I have to say you two don't suit each other at all. Dan said. The rest of the group understood what Dan meant. Monk was short for his age while Martha was quite a tall slender girl. Their height difference made the two of them look like brother and sister rather than lovers. What do you know? Monk mumbled to himself. Martha and Cherry were now stood opposite each other. The two of them were both archer users and the tournament was set up this way on purpose. This tournament was to decide the team that would be going forward for the All Kingdom tournament. It was best to have a variety of different warriors. So the matchups the academy put together used similar weapons. In order to end up with a diverse team. Gary and Harry with their swords. Martha and Cherry with their bow. Dan and Arthur with his spear and longsword and so on. There weren't many archer knights so the crowd was excited to see how the match would turn out. The match will start in 3, 2, 1. The war horn sounded once again. Martha took an arrow from her quiver and quickly drew her bow firing it straight at Cherry. Instead of avoiding the arrow like most, Cherry simply took her time and aimed carefully before letting go. Cherry's arrow flew through the air and hit Martha's arrow dead on causing both of them to fall to the ground. Did you see that? Yeah. She managed to hit the arrow while it was still in the air. It's such a small target how is that possible? She must have been lucky. The crowd thought it was impossible to be able to display accuracy at that level and simply judged it as a fluke. But as Martha fired another arrow Cherry done the same proving it was not a fluke. Martha this time decided to do a quick draw. Firing two arrows in rapid succession but Cherry just responded with the same back. Cherry yawned as if she was bored by the fight. Rose said you were special for a second year. Now I see she was just comparing you to all the other green sashes. These words angered Martha. In the next shot Martha placed as much key as possible into her next arrow. This arrow flew out faster and stronger than the others before. Martha was sure this one would surprise her. But again. Cherry lifted her bow and shot one straight back. Only this time when Cherry's arrow hit Martha's it carried on going through the arrow causing it to split in half. The arrow continued moving forward and at the last second. Martha managed to move her head. The arrow continued forward slamming into the arena wall right by Kyle's face. Kyle went to take a look at the arrow and it had nearly completely sunken into the wall. Only leaving an inch sticking out of the wall. Such power. If she got hit by that she's going to die. The crowd thought. Monk gulped in fear for Martha. Martha felt a sting on her face as she noticed a slight trickle of blood drip to the ground. The arrow had managed to just throw on her face. Hey. Do you think the Master Knights will be able to stop that? I could hardly see the arrow. Kyle said nervously. 
Ray himself was even wondering the same thing. If he would be able to stop the arrow. Blocking it or using force against it was fine. But to be able to grab an arrow like that before it hit its target. It seemed like an impossible task. She should give up. Otherwise. She's going to get hurt. Ray suddenly said. My dragon system. Chapter 108 Stop the fight. Monk was worrying even more after hearing the words come out from Ray's mouth. Monk trusted Ray ever since Ray had gotten him out of the situation with the Minotaur. Martha please give up. Monk wanted to shout out these words but he knew what Martha was like and she wouldn't listen. Martha still had one more trick up her sleeve that she wanted to try. She knew she was in a dangerous situation but didn't want to give up before trying everything she had. Wilfred and Sir Kay were currently watching inside the arena. They were using Sir Kay's shadow skill to remain practically invisible to everyone. This included those in the audience. As well as the two contestants. Do you think you can stop the arrow in time? Wilfred asked. If it's at that speed. It's not a problem. The problem is if that arrow was her full power or not. Sir Kay replied. Wilfred wasn't able to use the shadow skill to hide himself like Sir Kay so he had to stay close. In this situation, it would have been ideal to have one of them cover Martha while the other cherry. Sir Kay looked towards Martha and could see she hadn't given up yet. He decided that until she did only then would he stop the fight. If the arrow moved faster, he might not be able to stop it completely but he could definitely stop it from causing a fatal blow. Finally, Martha had calmed herself down and was ready. She took a shot aiming straight for Cherry. Cherry took a shot back this time adding in her key making her arrow completely destroy Martha's. The arrow carried on moving forward but when Cherry looked up, she noticed that Martha was no longer there. Instead, another arrow was already coming at Cherry from the side. Cherry quickly shot another arrow to meet the one from the side. So that's your plan, Cherry said while smiling. Ever since Ray had given Martha advice from the first round, she wanted to practice it straight away. Although Martha didn't have much time and she hadn't perfected the technique. It was the last thing she had left. Every time Martha would take a shot. She would move in an instant taking another shot after. This would allow the archer to attack while constantly changing their position. The problem was it was extremely difficult for an archer to move while shooting and still be accurate. Martha's concentration was at her maximum. Shoot and move. Shoot and move. She mumbled to herself. The arrows came out fast and from all sorts of different angles. Cherry wasn't able to keep up and shoot all the arrows down. Lucky for her, she didn't have two. Many of the arrows were simply off target. Either going above her head or even falling short hitting the ground. As another arrow shot by Martha landed by Cherry's feet. Cherry bent down to pick up the arrow. It's a good idea. It's just a shame you don't have the power or accuracy to use it properly. Cherry put the arrow from the floor into her bow and started to gather her key. It was a lot bigger and stronger than the time before. Martha then used her quick draw skill while moving causing three arrows to fire nearly at the same time but in three different directions. The audience watching thought Cherry was done for but for some reason. Cherry remained calm while pulling back at her bow just aiming at one of the arrows. Watching from the sidelines Ray could see how much key was being put into the arrow with his dragon eyes. Sir Kay. Stop her now. Ray shouted. But the crowd at this point were cheering too loud for the master knights to hear anything. Cherry fired her arrow with all her key. It was a only shot skill that used up every bit of energy she had. If this didn't work then she knew she would lose. As the arrow left Cherry's bow it seemed to spin like crazy. As the arrow moved forward the wind around it was being sucked in causing a minotornado. The arrows that were coming at Cherry form different directions got sucked in by her arrow. It was now moving so fast that Martha had no way of dodging it. Sir Kay and Wilfred moved as soon as possible to stop the arrow but there was no way they would get to it in time. They both infused key into their weapons and shot out a blast of sword key energy hoping it would stop the arrow. As the key energy hit the arrow the power weakened and the tornado that went with it was no longer but the arrow still had great strength and carried on moving forward. Martha closed her eyes as she knew there was nothing she could do but take the arrow head on. Cluck. The sound of the arrow piercing through armor and into the body was heard. Strangely though, Martha could feel no pain. How was that possible though she thought? Had she passed on to the other side? Or perhaps it was the adrenaline in her body blocking the pain. 
Someone call a doctor here as soon as possible and make it quick. Wilfred shouted. Ah. So I did get hit by the arrow. Martha said to herself. If we hurry. We can still save the boy. Boy. Martha then opened her eyes and noticed that there was no arrow in her. Nothing not even a scratch on her. As she scanned around the arena to look for what happened she noticed Sir Kay and Wilfred were knelt down in front of her. Not only that but there was a boy in black armor on the ground. Martha rushed over to the Master Knights dreading for the worst. As she looked down it was someone that she cared for dearly. It was Monk. While Cherry was gathering key in her arrow as soon as Ray shouted for the Master Knights to take action. Monk moved in immediately. Using his black sash footwork. Running as hard and as fast as he had ever done before. Monk managed to make it just in time to stop the arrow. Taking the blow with his body. Instead of Martha. Monk please don't die. Martha cried out as she knelt by his side and looked at his pale face. My Dragon System. Chapter 109 Powerhouse. A group of doctors had quickly come to the scene to take Monk away. Martha had insisted that she had to go with them. At first. They were insistent that she couldn't come but she refused to move from the arena until they let her. In the end. Wilfred allowed Martha to head off to the medical bay with Monk. Wilfred quickly jumped up from the arena to the two announcers that were just off to the side slightly above the crowd. They were currently trying their best to calm down the crowd with small talk. Once Wilfred had informed them of the situation. They made an announcement. Everyone. We would like to let you know that unfortunately one of the contestants in the tournament has been injured but fear. Not the injury was not fatal and the student will be back in top condition in just a few hours. What this means though. Is the next match between Monk and Jasmine. Jasmine will be declared the automatic winner. There had been incidents of this happen in tournaments of the past before. That's why Avrian Academy had put in so many safety measures this year. Such as having a top medical team on standby and having two master knights in the ring. If Wilfred and Sir Kay hadn't been able to hit the arrow with their sword key. Then perhaps Monk wouldn't have been so lucky. After hearing that the wound wasn't so serious the crowd quietened down and were ready for the last and final match of the day. The last match was between Ian and Geo. Be safe man. Dan said to Ian as he walked up to the stage. Currently. Only Dan. Kyle. Sloth. Badger and Ray were stood at the side. Gary. Slivia. Monk and now Martha had all been taken to the medical bay after their fights. Go on big guy. Badger and Sloth shouted. Badger and Sloth had become friendly with Ian after the Dragon Knight training sessions. Ian was kind to everyone and unlike them. He hardly got bullied due to his large size. Ian would often step in to help them when he would see people treating the two differently around the academy. Ray come on. Let's say something. We have to show our support too. Kyle said. You can do it. You're the strongest hunk I know. Kyle shouted. Ian's ears started to burn as he was getting slightly embarrassed by his team's praises. Kyle then gave a nudge to Ray as he noticed Ray still hadn't said anything. Finally. Ray managed to mumble out a few words. You can do it. Ray said in a quiet soft voice. It was so quiet that Kyle was the only one that heard him. The two contestants had finally entered the stage. Ian was holding his two own-handed axes. With the money from Ray and his own savings. Ian was able to upgrade them into intermediate weapons. But the rest of Ian's equipment was lacking. The weapons he was holding was the only piece of beast gear he currently had. On the other side of the arena was Geo. Who was just as big as Ian. Geo wielded a heavy two-handed axe. It was hard to tell what level it was but it looked better than Ian's. Not only that Geo also had beast gear covering most of his body. Do you think Ian can win? Kyle asked Ray. After seeing all the gear that Geo was wearing. Kyle was starting to feel nervous for Ian. Ian had always relied on his strength in matches but Geo looked just as big and strong. If two people were just as strong as each other. 
Then Kyle couldn't help but think the equipment would give Geo the edge. Just watch the fight. I think you will be in for a nice surprise. <laughs>